The Wolverines of Bo Schembechler, 8-2 overall on the season, 7-1 in the Big Ten Conference. Earl Bruce's Buckeyes, a similar 8-2 mark, 6-2 in the Big Ten. The Wolverines, Lee, conceivably could tie for the Big Ten Conference Championship. That is, if Northwestern was to upset Illinois today. Bad chance. <laughs> <laughs> the captains are meeting at the 50-yard line along with the officials for the toss of the coin. Stefan Humphreys and John Lott for the University of Michigan. For the Buckeyes, Garcia Lane, Roland Tatum, Bill Roberts, and John Frank, the quad captains. Coach, tell the truth. You have a little butterflies? A little bit. <clears throat> yes, a little bit. Me too, Coach. <laughs> I bet you do. I don't think anybody here. Is Ohio otherwise. State won the toss. Great. And Great. they elected to receive. Great. And we're just about underway in the 80th meeting between the Ohio State Buckeyes and the Michigan Wolverines, a traditional rivalry that date back, dates back to 1897. And one of the reasons this rivalry is such a bitterly contested rivalry is that it took seven years for the Ohio State Buckeyes to score their first point ever on a Michigan football team. That happened in 1904 when Bill Marquardt picked up a Michigan fumble and ran it back 56 yards for the first points ever scored by the Ohio State Buckeyes on those great Michigan teams of the early years. Lee, you weren't at that game, were you? I had a <laughs> ticket, but I didn't go. It was raining. <laughs> we should mention Michigan's two losses this year. 25-24 out in Seattle to the Washington Huskies. A 16-6 loss to Mike White, apparently Rose Bowl-bound Illinois Illini. You're, of course, in Columbus, familiar with what happened to the Buckeyes. A loss on the road at Iowa, a loss to Illinois. One interesting thing about the loss to Iowa by the Buckeyes that has not been publicized. Coming out of the Oklahoma game, Mike Tomczak at the Oklahoma game suffered a heat stroke. It was so serious that he actually had liver damage, and he did not recover fully in time to play against Iowa. He did play but he was not in top form against the Iowa Hawkeyes. Consequently, the Hawks beat the Buckeyes in their first Big Ten game of the year. We're awaiting the appearance of Michigan out of the tunnel, and Coach, uh, have you seen uh, much of this over the years? Or you've always probably either been in the locker room? matter of fact, it gets a little crowded there in the tunnel. <laughs> the game can start in the tunnel. <laughs> They're nose to nose and toes to toes in that tunnel right now. Here they come, the Wolverines of Michigan. The electricity in the stadium is unbelievable. A dark, cloudy, overcast day, about 50 degrees. So far, the weather has held off since about 1 o'clock. And there are the Bucks making their appearance at the entrance to the tunnel. Michigan leads the series 43 wins, 31 losses. There's been five ties in this great rivalry. But since 1919, Gary, this series is dead even. 31 wins for Ohio State, 31 wins for Michigan, and five ties. Coach, in preparing for a contest like this, different during the week, obviously the players feel it, but as, as far as a coach, different methods Michigan week as opposed to uh, other Big Ten contests. You've got to make sure of one thing, that you don't peak too early. You don't dare get ready to win this on Thursday. You're going to win on Saturday. And you don't dare peak too early. Of course, your preparation starts long, long before that. What did you do psychologically to prepare your Ohio State teams for this, this great game? It depended on whom they played the week before. If we'd had a real tough ball game like the great Iowa teams back in the 50s, we couldn't work very hard for Michigan. And it was more mental than it was physical. On the other hand, if you play a team in which Ohio State won very easily last Saturday against Northwestern, then you've got to work hard. You've just got to do it. We're just about ready for the kickoff. The Buckeyes are lining up to receive the kickoff from Todd Schlope, the Michigan kicker. And here with a play-by-play of the 1983 Ohio State-Michigan game here on WBNS 10 TV, your sports leader is Gary Radnich. Thank you very much, Lee. As you said, Todd Slopey will kick it off. Todd, the right foot. 
naked. He was a barefoot kicker. He was actually the place kicker at the beginning of the year the, on extra points and field goals. Missed one in the Washington game that cost, uh, cost Michigan that contest. He has been replaced by Bob Bergeron. But here we go. A barefoot kicker, Todd Slopey, will get things underway for Ohio State and Michigan. And here we go. Woolridge and Lindsey deep. Ball goes to Woolridge. And we'll open up Ohio State, first and 10 on their own 20-yard line, and the crowd is ready, both sides. Mike Tomczak, of course, will open at quarterback with Von Grodnax and Keith Byers behind him. And they're opening, excuse me, they have decided to go with Barry Walker, number 43. Lee, there's been some talk of Brodnack with an injury during the week, and they're going to open with Walker. Brodnack has a slightly twisted ankle, and Barry Walker from Lancaster is in at the fullback position, a six-footer, 214 pounds. And Tom Zach goes to Walker up the middle immediately. And the young kid stopped by Al Sintich. So Barry Walker, six foot, 214 pounds, 122 carries, a 4.9 average out of Lancaster, gets the call to open things. A little cross reverse to Walker, who probably is the quickest man in the Ohio State lineup to hit the hole. And he hit it very well there. He picked up nine yards. You saw the starting lineup for the Ohio State Buckeyes offensively. Call it second and one at the 29-yard line. So it's second down and one. And a pitch out. Now going to Byers. Flag goes down. He has the first down. We'll wait for the official call. Referee John Nealon and his crew working this ball game this afternoon. The last two years, of course, they have belonged to Ohio State. And the story, Jim, of course, has been costly Michigan turnovers. Yes, it has. Uh, we have an illegal motion penalty against the Buckeyes of Ohio State. I was going to mention, as we take a look at Keith Byers, that 230-pound tailback for the Ohio State Buckeyes that they must have surprised Michigan a little bit with that play, starting the fullback in motion. That's the first time they've done that this year, and apparently that's illegal, or he started toward the line of scrimmage, or they got some illegal motion up front. But you saw the fullback start in motion, and Byers, that big tailback of theirs, will get the ball a lot this afternoon, because I think Earl Bruce in Ohio State wants to go on the ground against the Wolverines. All right, now they move the fullback, Walker, into that wing on the left side. Byer is the lone back. And Tomczak firing to the fullback at the 30-yard line, close to the first down. It was second down and six when they snapped that ball, and Byers on the receiving end that time. He just came out of the backfield. As we talked about that offense, Byers, Broadnax did not get the start at the fullback position. Rather, it was Barry Walker, sort of a surprise. John Frank certainly the the cream of the receivers there, the tight end. He's outstanding and looking for his 108th reception in this ball game. That would make him the number two receiver in Buckeye history. First and 10 at the 31. And the first down gathered up by Barry, or rather the uh, first call goes to Barry Walker across the 35-yard line. They rule him down at the 37. And Ray, it looks like the Buckeyes are content to stay on the ground against this Michigan defense. Walker, of course, uh, having to confront with this Michigan defense on that last carry. A little bit of a change in there as Tim Anderson, of course, getting the starting call. Carlton Rose once again starting, this time on the inside at the linebacker post. Second down and three at the 38-yard line of the Buckeyes. Fires on the carry. And if you're going to stop him, that's the way to do it. Around the ankles. Rose was on top. And at the bottom of the pile for the University of Michigan, Al Sinchich. Michigan coaches all week long have been talking to the Michigan defense about hitting Byers at the knee or below. As we take a look at the Michigan secondary, Brad Cochran and John Lott, the corners, the safeties, Evan Cooper and Tony Gant. But defensively, Michigan must hit Byers below the ankles because if they get him up above the waist, it's a mismatch because he is a huge, strong, upper body kid. And he can make a lot of yardage after you hit him, if you hit him above the waist. All right, it's third down and three for the Buckeyes. And Tomczak getting pressure, firing out. And Michigan with a great charge left by Kevin Brooks that time, forcing it over into a punch situation for Ohio State. 
on both third down situations, Michigan has come with a blitz. Look at Kevin Brooks and Mike Mallory. Both of them were in there. They had one guy to block for him. That was Mark Karowitz, the defense offensive tackle. He had to block two people. He couldn't, and that's why Brooks came free and forced the pass to be thrown early. Give him a half sack, right? Carl Edwards, the putter, now back to punt. He carries a 42.9 average in the Big Ten for the year, just about 38 a punt. Cooper back at his 18-yard line for Michigan. Low, spiraling kick that'll bounce around the 26 and bouncing out of bounds. So they'll place the ball at the Michigan 26 before they go on offense. Let's pause for this message. So the University of Michigan goes on offense for the first time this afternoon. The line of scrimmage at the Wolverine 26. Garrett and Rogers, the running backs. Hand off to Rogers, cuts it back up over the middle. The 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, could go all the way. And instead, it's hauled down from behind, right around the 29-yard line. They mark it at the 27, and it was Kevin Bell, a junior from Richmond, Virginia, making the touchdown-saving tackle for Ohio State. Michigan caught Ohio State in a flow to the football, Ray. One of those situations where Rogers cuts back now he's out there, gets a good block out here from Mark Ray. Right there you saw him going down. And Rodgers rips off a big gainer on a cutback play, taking advantage of Ohio State's quickness flowing to the motion of the football. Rodgers gaining 47 yards on that carry. And so the ball is marked at the Ohio State 27, first and 10. Steve Smith faking a handoff to his fullback, pitches now to Rodgers, and Rodgers goes out of bounds. And they'll mark it at the 24, saying he stepped out of bounds over there. So he's faking to his fullback, Garrett, running the option and then pitching again to Rogers. Well, they came with the option, Ray. They came with the option, and it worked well. They got five on the play. And to make that option go, the offensive line of Michigan is going to have to do a whale of a job blocking up front. Smith and Garrett and Rogers in the backfield, the receivers. Nelson, Mark Ray, and Bean. Mark Ray and Bean, the wide receivers. Second down and seven. For Michigan, Mark Ray wide to the left, being wide to the right. And it's Garrett on the carry, gets across the 20, just about to the 19-yard line. So Garrett coming in this ball game, averaging 4.5 on a carry, turning ahead, and finally brought down by the interior linebacker, Clark Backus. On defense, in that three-man forward wall for Ohio State, Laurie Lee, Backus, and Tatum. Tatum a good one, a hard hitter. And in the secondary, a very strong secondary. And that's the strongest part about Ohio State's defense. Need two yards. And Garrett going straight ahead. Close to the first down. Hitting on that right side. And they indicate Michigan first down. At the 16. And it was a simple play up the middle. They are running the option. And one of the first parts of that option, Ray, as we've talked all season long, is that fake to the fullback. You saw the fullback get the ball the last two times in a row. But because they ran the option on that first down play to Rodgers after the long run, that means those linebackers can't stay inside and cheat against the fullback. They've got to float outside. Garrett comes out of the ballgame. Armstrong now in a fullback to go with Rodgers. Fake to Armstrong, option play, Smith on the carry, gets inside the 15, 14, close to the 13, and Backus leading the way on the tackle against Steve Smith. First time we've seen uh, Michigan run the option to the long side or uh, far side of the field. The short side of the field, it went for three yards to the field. They got more action from Ohio State flowing to the ball. Ohio State is very quick defensively in their linebackers and secondary people. They've come up to support the run extremely quickly. I wouldn't be surprised in a situation like this. We don't see some play action kind of a pass, Ray. All right, we'll find out, Jim. Second down and seven, three yards on that carry. Armstrong stays in there at fullback. And Armstrong on the carry, gets inside the 10, close to the nine-yard line. So Greg Armstrong getting uh, some playing time early in this ball game. Morrill, the tackle on the right side for Ohio State on that uh, stop. Good experience for Ohio State as far as it, talking about upperclassmen. Seniors, juniors, for the most part, seniors in this defensive group. At the nine-yard line, 
third down and about three yards needed. Double tight ends, Ray. Garrett back in at fullback. And Smith trying to cut back in. Does not get the first down. And it was Roland Tatum in there around the ankles to make the tackle on Steve Smith. Came with the option again into the double tight end situation. And Michigan had the first down. But Steve cut it back inside just momentarily. And the hole was outside. That allowed Tatum with his quickness to get in there and stop Smith before he got to the line of scrimmage or got only a yard. Bergeron comes on now to try to make it 3 nothing for the Wolverines. Bergeron has that ball marked by Decker at the 16. It'll be a 26-yard attempt. And for Bergeron, attempting his 15th field goal of the year. He's 14 for 15. Give him number 15 with 8.14 to go in this first quarter. Michigan goes on top on a 26-yard field goal by Bergeron. Michigan 3, Ohio State nothing. Team to go in this first quarter here at the University of Michigan. The Wolverines on top by a score of three nothing. Slopy all set for the kickoff. Lindsay and Woolridge back there to take the kickoff, and it's Lindsay number 20 decides to come out at the 15 straight ahead. Gets close to the 17 yard line. Now you can notice that his running mate Woolridge says stay back. Instead, Lindsay elected to bring it out of the end zone. Anything more than three yards deep in the end zone, Ray, and really it's a wise idea to stay in the end zone. You saw he tried to bring it out from about five yards deep. He only got to the 11, 16 yard line. So they lose four yards if he takes the touchback. The official now has marked it at the 17. Make it first and 10. Byers on the carry. Fumble, loose ball down there. Recovered by Ohio State. But I'll tell you, Sinchit was in there to greet him. Tim Anderson was also sticking his nose in the action. Watch 53 Sinchit. He comes off the block and sticks his nose right in there. Now he comes down with the left arm and scrapes the ball free. That's a great play by Sinchit. Now Michigan can't react to it. John Lott has his hands on it. Then it's batted away, and it's Anderson, 22, that gets on the ball for Ohio State as they get a big break recovering their own fumble. Right at the original line of scrimmage, so no gain, no loss. Second down and 10 for Ohio State. Byers again. Nope, check it. Woolridge on the carry. Woolridge close to the 22-yard line. Brad Cochran in there to make the stop. Woolridge, a sophomore out of Akron, and really has served as a backup to Keith Byers. But with some of the lopsided scores that Ohio State has had over the season, Woolridge has got a lot of playing time behind Byers. And Byers immediately back into the game, Ray. That big bull, Earl Bruce, wants to have that kind of a running back in the game. He's big, strong. He can break tackles. And in situations like this in big games, an extra yard by anybody is a big play because every yard means something in a game like this with Ohio State and Michigan. Broadnax, the fullback, is in that wing pack position. Fake to the fullback and now coming out throwing. And I believe it is Jemison who makes the reception at the Ohio State 40-yard line. Just a pattern down and cutting to the sideline and staying inbounds. Down and out pattern. Tony Gant over there on the coverage. He's the safety. He gave him a little bit too much room to the sideline. First thing that's key is Tom Zach gets protection. Sinsich comes off late, gets some pressure, but Tom Zach's able to throw the ball real well out there, and you see how much cushion he's got. Does he catch it in bounds? Yes, he's got one foot in. The catch is good, and Ohio State with a first down. Byers on a first and ten, trying to slide outside. No part of it. And on the chase was Carlton Rose. They had a hold of Byers, and Byers getting back just across the 40 give him a yard on that carry and make it second and nine there's a story on Byers coming into this ball game he needed 50 yards in this game to go over the thousand mark in the Big Ten alone Byers has carried now three times and he has only one yard to show for it Ohio State has gone to the year a couple of times Michigan on that last drive used seven running plays plus the field goal so they have not gone to the air as yet 3-0 Michigan, six minutes to go in the first quarter. Byers on the carry, and boy, he has swarmed over just about his motion to the 42-yard line, a hard yard to pick up that time against the Michigan defense. One thing Ohio State has not done, Ray, is tried to go outside. Everything we've seen 
from the Buckeyes has been Byers or Woolridge or the fullback off tackle. We've seen one counter play. Michigan is loading up people inside. They're actually moving a middle guard over toward the strength of the formation. Now Ohio State, after two runs, forced into a third and eight. So Ohio State attempting a third down conversion here and coming in this ball game, averaging just about 43% on their third down conversions for the year. They are three or third and eight. Tom Zach has a man open. And on the catch this time, it's John Frank is tight in. Close to the first down. The official says he is shy of the first down about a yard and a half. And so it's punt formation for Ohio State. And you saw Tim Anderson coming in there on the blitz. Michigan blitzing had single coverage out there on Frank with Carlton Rose and Cochran. And you'll see Michigan coming with linebackers. As 57 Anderson comes in, just gets the pass off. But that forced Frank to break the pattern off quicker. They didn't get enough for the first down. So while they didn't get the sack, the blitz still worked. All right, Edwards on the punt. End over in. Cooper waiting for it at his 14-yard uh, line and gets out of bounds at the 21-yard line. So Michigan will go on the attack at the 21-yard line when time resumes. Right now a timeout. Michigan on top, 3-0. To time back in at Michigan. First and 10 at the Wolverine 21-yard line. You remember the first play they went from the line of scrimmage moments ago. A 47-yard jump by this man, Rogers. This time he is not that successful. Gets a couple of yards on the carry, close to the 23-yard line. So Rogers, two on the carry, stopped by the nose guard Spencer Nelms, a junior out of Decatur, Georgia. And so 13, uh, three carries right now for Rogers for a total of 52 yards. Well, the reason that play didn't go like the first one, it was the same play. That time Ohio State's pursuit on the backside of the play stayed home, and they took away the cutback from Rogers. All right, Garrett and Rogers, Smith the quarterback, Mark Ray wide to the right, Bean wide to the left. Now they use Rogers in that little slot as a wing position on the left side. Smith with a man open and close to the first down, making the catch that time was Sim Nelson. Roland Tatum gets credit for the tackle. Ohio well, State dropped back into a three deep zone. They had their linebackers taking pretty deep drops. Sim Nelson just came out, read the linebackers, and got into a hole. Smith delivered it right on target, and they got enough yardage for the first down. Good pattern, good throw. That's for Smith, the first time that he goes to the air, and he's successful with that pass to his tight end. And for Sim Nelson, his 34th reception of the year, first and 10. And that was the third first down by Michigan. Ball at the 33 of the Wolverines. Fake to Rogers. Smith with plenty of time. Good blocking. Firing deep to Mark Ray. Should go all the way. Will go all the way. Touchdown, Michigan. Big, big play by the Wolverines. And a very big mistake by the quarterback back there, Sean Gale, who we talked about at the top of the show, Ray. He went for the interception, and Smith got it over his head. Mark Ray is running a post from the left side of your screen. It's against the zone. He looks off him, comes back. Now watch number two go for the interception. It's over his head, and Mark Ray is behind him. 67 yards for the touchdown, and the Wolverines strike quickly. A big passing play from Smith as you take a look at that. The ground level, Mark Ray had beaten this man by about three yards, but as Jimmy told you, trying for the interception, didn't have enough height, and could not do it. So here's Bergeron to try for the extra point. Decker all set to hold. Ball is down. The ball is up. The kick is good. And so with three minutes and 48 seconds to go, the University of Michigan Wolverines 10, the Buckeyes of Ohio State nothing but two electrifying plays so far in this first quarter. One a running play. The second one the big passing play. Right, and look at Steve Smith. He looks right. He's looking right. Then he comes back left and throws this ball up very nicely. You never throw the long ball short. And when Gale went up for the interception, rather than staying with his man, he gave the opportunity for Mark Ray to get behind him. He gambled and lost, and Michigan benefits with a big 67-yard touchdown pass. And the Wolverines, Ray, all season long have been looking for that pass, the big play. 
they haven't got it except for the last couple of games since Steve Smith's arm's been feeling better and he's been able to throw the deep pass. You remember taking a look at the Michigan roster this year and the one thing they had talked about it as we took a look at the Ohio State uh, kick return runners and Schofield all set to kick off was Mark Ray coming into the university billed as a big play man and he has matured and now has his fourth touchdown pass of the year reception wise and for Smith and Mark Ray they combined on the longest passing touchdown play of the 1983 season a season of total of 67 yards and up to this point it was a total of 53 and who did it belong to it belonged to Mark Ray against Minnesota 10-0, 348 to go in the opening quarter. Michigan on top. Schlopey's kick. And taken this time by Lindsay. He likes it not, not to bring it out. And so Ohio State will set the line of scrimmage at the 20-yard line. Ray, you talk about Mark Ray and his receiving. That was his sixth catch of the season, four of which have gone for the distance. Now, tell me about big play receivers. That's about as big as you can get. Really has got the opportunity to play and really has made the most of it. Scoring drive, of course, on that last one, capped off by the big play of 67 yards. So Ohio State with Byers and Walker, the running backs. Pitch out to Byers. Trying to use some blocking. Didn't get much blocking. Swarmed under. And if there was a couple of key words for Michigan defense coming in this game, it was gang tackling Byers. We talked to Alex Agassi yesterday and looked at films of Byers in Ohio State. And one of the things Agassi told us, Ray, Michigan defensively must gang tackle Byers. And if anybody gets him one on one, they've got to hit him below the knees. As we take a look at the over 100,000 fans here at Michigan Stadium doing the Wolverine wave. All right, Byers now on five carries, only a total of four yards. Second down and eight for Ohio State at the 22-yard line of the Buckeyes. And now Tom Zach going to an audible and tries to put a man in motion. That man is Anderson. Hand off to Byers. Got a little daylight that time across the 25. Brought down close to the 27-yard line. It was Tony Gant from his free safety position to make the stop. Well, you saw Tony Gant come up and tackle Byers, and then you saw Byers really roll over him. This is what you mean by you don't want to tackle him one-on-one. -on -one. Good hole. Now, Byers is hit there. One, two. He gets three extra yards after the original contact. And for Earl Bruce and the Ohio State Buckeyes, that's the kind of back they like. When you can bleed that kind of yardage after your first contact, you're going to have a good ball game. Third down and two. And this time it was uh, the carry by Byers. Mallory in there to make the stop. They had to get just about to the 30-yard line, and they should have and do have enough. The ball's marked at the 31, so Ohio State chalking up the first down. Third first down for the Buckeyes. 10-0, Michigan on top. Byers checking out of the lineup over to the sideline. Woldridge in a tailback now for Ohio State. Broadnecks the fullback. Woldridge on the carry. Gets about to the 33, maybe the 34-yard line at the bottom of the pile. Anderson for Michigan. Mallory also in on the stop. And they're going to give some credit to Hammerstein, too. Hammerstein had checked in and replaced DeFelice on the previous play. Two yards on that last carry, second down and eight. And we're very happy that you could join us this afternoon on our Wolverine Sports Television Network. Michigan leading 10 nothing. a minute and 35 seconds to go. Tomzak got a man deep. Lott tried to intercept and couldn't do it. Completed down there to Anderson at the Michigan 41-yard line. They caught Michigan in a zone, and John Lott had the underneath coverage. Then he releases him outside to the safety. The safety man, Evan Cooper, has got to get over there a little earlier. First, it's a misdirection rollout. Now, this is where it's key. Right over the hands, although actually Lott got a piece of the ball, but still, that's the seam of the zone that's open. Too deep. Lott lets him go underneath. He tries to get his hands up. He can't. Cooper's a little late getting over to cover. First down and 10 at the Michigan 41-yard line. Tom Zach, the signal caller for Ohio State. 
And a handoff this time to the fullback, Barry Walker. Marty got a yard at the most, and Nate Rogers was in there to greet him first. Well, everybody happy this afternoon here at Ann Arbor. Maybe the Ohio State fans at the present time not too joyous as their team is down 10 to nothing with a minute and five seconds to go in the opening quarter. I'm Ray Lane along with Jim Brownstetter. We're very happy you joined us for the 1983 season. This is our finale of the regular season. Glad you could be with us. Tom Hassel, who has had some problems, of course, with that hamstring the last couple of ball games, getting into the contest. Carlton Rose has come out of the ball game at linebacker for Michigan. Second down and 10. No gain on that last one. Here's Byers plodding along. Great second effort. Getting close to the 36-yard line. Looked as if he was stopped at the 39. We talked about it coming in. What Byers can do for you with his size and his ability to get yardage after the original hit. And that's what Byers did there. Should have been stopped for a gain of probably one or two. But he picked up four after he was hit. And that's one of the keys for Michigan. Once you hit him, you've got to get people there, gang tackling with guys like Tommy Hassel, the linebackers, Anderson and Mallory, getting in there to make sure that the second contact stops Byers. Ohio State with four first downs. They face now a third and six at the 36-yard line of Michigan. Tom Zach wants to pass. Avoids a would-be tackler and then fires behind Jemison. He had Jemison open, elected not to go with him. It almost cost him a being tossed for a loss. He finally released, but fired wide and behind his uh, wide receiver. So fourth down and six coming up. Michigan on top by a score of 10 to nothing, and that is the end of the first quarter. To start the second quarter, Will Gamble for the first down. It is fourth down and five. Tom Zach, good protection, a lot of time, and firing out to Byers. Close to the first down, rammed right at the 31-yard line. In there to hit him was Cooper, along with uh, Cooper, Tim Anderson. Boy, he had a lot of time to set up. A lot of time to set up, and there you see Byers standing out there. He was the back that got the fake on the running play. Now, Michigan... Didn't have anybody covering him. Anderson came off. Cooper saw it late and got to him. But whether Byers got across the first down marker, we don't know. It's going to be very close. Well, you take a look right now for yourselves. Yes, just did get it. So the Buckeyes have a first down. And that will be at the 31-yard line of Michigan. In that first quarter, by the way, Ohio State had the ball for 9 minutes and 45 seconds. Michigan, 5 minutes and 4 seconds. But in those 5 minutes and 4 seconds, the Wolverines put 10 points on the board. First and 10, Buckeyes at the Michigan 31-yard line. We're just into the second quarter. Hand off to Byers. Almost lost that ball. He was juggling it as he hit the line of scrimmage. You saw Anderson and Mallory come up there to greet him right at the line of scrimmage. It appears, Ray, as though Michigan's defense has both Mallory and Anderson keying on Keith Byers, and whenever he comes, takes one step towards the line of scrimmage, they are filling in a hurry. They do not want to let him get any big yardage through the middle. And again, we have not seen Ohio State try to go outside. Byers has carried the ball nine times now for Ohio State for 19 yards. He got one of the last carry. A repeat performance this time, close to the first down, spinning and turning inside the Michigan, the market at the 20-yard line. Kent and Cochran in there to make the hit on him. But Byers that time getting good momentum as he took the handoff. This is what happens when you get a guy that isn't stopped at the line of scrimmage. Byers, when he gets ahead of steam up, you talked about momentum, Ray. He is just one tough back to bring down. There's the hole. Good blocking. You cannot arm tackle this guy. He'll run right through you. Cochran got a good shot at him, as you saw, but Byers ran through that and got three more after he was hit there. So Ohio State with the first down at the Michigan 20-yard line. First down and 10. Byers gets the call again right over the middle. Just about five yards on that carry going right over the middle following Joe Dooley and Zelensky, his right guard, Dooley the center. Earl Bruce is doing nothing fancy here on this drive. He is just running the ball right between the tackles, and he's using the big guy, Keith Byers, to get it done. You saw number 64. That is Jim Luce, a guard who brings in the play. He alternates with uh, Laudermilk, the other guard. Byers now 11 carries for 33 yards. And timeout now. DeFelice having some problems down there and being assisted uh, toward the Michigan bench. He was uh, shaken up earlier in the first quarter and came off, and Hammerstein came in to replace him. 
Dave Meredith has gone in now. DeFelice being assisted off the field. Looks like a right ankle, Ray. Looks like a right ankle or right knee. We don't know right now. We'll have to check and see how Russ Mill and his staff does on the sideline with DeFelice. One of the things, though, about Michigan defensively, as we've seen in the past few weeks, is they have a couple of different sets of three down interior linemen. They can flip-flop Hammerstein and Meredith and Sinsich all through in there with Kevin Brooks. So they've got good depth in that position. Meredith, number 96, the senior out of Sterling Heights Stevenson High School, has checked in in the place of uh, Vince DeFelice. Second down and six. Byers again, this time on the pitch out. And they really submarined him over there in a hurry. And it was Hammerstein that got underneath to make a rolling tackle on him. First time Ohio State has tried to go wide with a play, and you see it. It's a pitch sweep. Now watch 66. Hammerstein comes in there. Now he just goes down in the ground below the knees. Once again, you got to hit Byers below the knees because if you get into an upper body battle with him, Byers is going to win it. No gain on that carry as he tried to get outside. You see it's third down and six. Ohio State trying to get on the board here, but more importantly, trying to get the first down. That was Frank, the tight end in motion. And they go to Frank. He steps out of bounds at the five-yard line. So Frank had gone in motion, then reversed himself in motion, and was on the receiving end. Well, there's not a lot you can do about that because that's just a great pass and a fine reception. He's looking to Frank the entire way, and Tom Zach lofts it up, and that's a nice catch because Lyles was hustling over there to try to get to him. He still had to get it up over Lyles' hands because Lyles is following. He does. Nice catch, nice pass, nice pattern. Isolating the tight end on the outside linebacker, Rodney Lyles. And so for John Frank, the senior tight end at All Big Ten, his 108th catch of the year, of his career, that is. Byers goes no place, stacked up at the line of scrimmage at the five-yard line. Fumble, Michigan's ball. Oh, a turn of events here with 12 minutes and 7 seconds to go. Byers losing control of that ball as he hit the line of scrimmage. Well, we didn't see the ball pop free, Ray. Let's take a look at the replay. Anderson coming in there along with Mallory. They get him low. Well, you see Michigan's defensive backs really hustling in there looking for the football, maybe from this angle. Byers going in. There's the ball pop free right there. You saw the hit. I believe it was Mallory. Mallory made the hit as he went through the line of scrimmage. Michigan gets a big break, Ray. All right, they took six minutes and 41 seconds on that drive. Nothing to score for it. And Michigan taking over now with 12 minutes and seven seconds to go, shifting around. And Michigan doing a big job of causing the turnover at the Wolverine five-yard line. They're going to mark it at the six, so it's first and ten. Here's Rodgers on the carry. We'll get maybe a yard or two at the most. A year ago, fans, you'll remember... Michigan turned the ball over six times to the Buckeyes. It turned out to be costly turnovers and caused defeat. Three times a year before when Michigan had turnovers. The story in this game, the key could be turnovers at Ohio State with that costly one here at the five-yard line. Exactly. And when you get inside the 10-yard line in a big game like this, Ray, <coughs> excuse me, one of the keys is scoring, getting points on the board. You don't get that many opportunities in big games against good defenses, and when you get down to the opportunity to score, you got to put points up. Rodgers got one yard on that last carry, second down and nine. Here's Rodgers again, and Gang tackled as he is shy of getting up on that 10-yard line. Close to the nine. They'll mark it between the eight and the nine yard, at the nine-yard line. So about three yards on that carry. Give them a couple yards, and they'll make a third down and seven. So it's tough going now with guys like Morrill and Tatum in there to plant the shoulders into the Michigan running backs. Michigan running both plays into the short side of the field, though, Ray. And it makes you think that maybe Bo is going to come back to the wide side of the field with an end run, possibly a sweep or an option, to the field. Rodgers, five carries, a total of 56 yards, and Michigan face now with a third down and seven at the Michigan nine-yard line. Smith looking... And firing low. Trying to get the first down. He had Rodgers out there and Mark Ray, but it was into the turf, and so Michigan will be calling on Don Bracken to punt it out of Michigan territory if he can. 
Exactly. Michigan has had a trouble the last couple of weeks of uh, rushes on the punts. Yesterday we saw the films of Bracken and they've been working on him to get a quicker release with his left foot, take a shorter step when he receives the football and try to get it off quicker. Bracken feels that that's going to help him not only in the distance of his punts, but also avoiding that rush. You're taking a look at number 12 quickly, and that was Garcia Lane back. He has returned two punts this year for touchdowns, so keep an eye on him this time. Number 12, Bracken punts it out of the end zone, not very far, bounces at the 35, gets an Ohio State bounce, back to the Michigan 25-yard line. Oh, oh, Ohio State with great possession, field position right now, and we have a timeout, Wolverines 10, Ohio State nothing by Michigan's Don Bracken turned out to be only 17 yards. So at the 26-yard line of Michigan, Ohio State goes on the attack. And across the 26 to the 24, maybe the 23-yard line, Byers on the carry. Close to gaining maybe three yards on that carry. We'll see where they mark it. Anderson and Hassel in there for the tackle. Couple of yards on the carry. Two yards, so it'll be second and eight. DeFelice getting treatment there, and what a job. Fellas like Russ Miller and Rex Thompson have done this season. And that training department for the University of Michigan Wolverines. Timeout. Michigan has asked for a timeout with nine minutes and 58 seconds, and I think that sort of surprises maybe the Michigan coaching staff. But we do have a timeout. Michigan 10, Ohio State nothing. A little more time against the Michigan Blitz. It works, and he throws a real nice pass on the run. Frank, again, a nice catch. Coverage by Lyles is not bad. That's just a good pass and a good catch. You've got to give credit to those guys when they make the good plays. And Frank is an outstanding receiver. Tom Zach rolling left and throwing across his body put it the only place Tom Zach, or rather Frank, could have caught it. Well, the referee, John Nealon, had first indicated he wanted the chain brought across on the far side of the field before they got there. He said he took another look at the ball, said, no, it's a first down. It's just inside that 16-yard line. So at the 15, Tom Zach now 7-9 of the passing department for a total of 90 yards. Byers breaks a couple of tackles, drives all the way to the five-yard line of Michigan, dragging Rodney Lyles with him to the Michigan five also Cooper in there on the stop boy all you have to do is give him a little bit of a crease and there it is got a guard pulling through there Zelensky and he gets a block on Gant and Lyles has to come over and you can see the three guys Cooper coming over finally to put the hit on him Michigan has only allowed three rushing touchdowns Frank or Ray all season long Fans and will remember that last one at Wisconsin right it was in it was against Wisconsin Wisconsin's Errol Ellerson went in on the ground they're threatening here again. First and goal, Ohio State at the Michigan five-yard line. And driving down close to the one-yard line, Tom Zach on the keeper that time. The official will mark it at the Michigan one. Straight quarterback sneak, and he's got a lot of room in there. He got four yards on that carry, as Michigan did not go into their goal line set on the five. Now they'll have people pinching to the center. But they didn't go into that goal line on the five. Second down and a yard to go for that touchdown for Ohio State. So it's second and goal. Handoff to Byers. And Byers with a little extra effort driving into the end zone. Touchdown Ohio State. And so after 32 quarters, Michigan's defense finally coughs up a touchdown in the rushing department. Straight power. Watch Byers. Rolls into the hole behind Zelensky. Anderson hits him behind the goal line, but he rolled off and got in. Watch 57 Anderson. He hits him back there, but then it's Byers. All Byers and all his power rolling once and rolling into the end zone. For Byers, his 18th touchdown of the season. Spangler will try for the extra point, number 10, for Ohio State. And his kick is up and good. So the Buckeyes get on the board with 8 minutes and 44 seconds to go in the second quarter. Michigan 10, Ohio State 7. Had great field position where they started out at the 26-yard line, and Byers capped it off with that one-yard run for his 18th touchdown of the year. A gain of five on the carry that time by the fullback for Michigan. Second and five. 
fake to Garrett. Option play. Steve Smith eluded a couple of the would-be tacklers. Should have the first down at the 30-yard line. First time we've seen that formation, too, right? Some Nelson, the tight end, splits out wide to the right. They've got two wide receivers to the left. Stephon Humphrey pulls. This is not an option. It is a quarterback sweep. And, and Humphreys gets the block on the corner, Cresselius, and then Smith does a good job of running in heavy traffic, getting enough for the first down. Jimmy, when you talk about the sweep he has, of course, when he gets out there, he can decide where his blocking is. If he wants to cut it back, he can, right? Exactly. Depending upon which way the corner man on the line of scrimmage defensively plays him. First and 10 at the Michigan 30-yard line. And this time, Garrett on the carry. Eddie Garrett picks up about three yards on that uh, carry. Brought down by Thomas Johnson. He is a backup interior linebacker. And Tatum also in on the stop. By the way, we mentioned Thomas Johnson, a young man out of Detroit's McKenzie High School and only a sophomore down at Ohio State. So they got great plans for him. Garrett has called, carried the ball four times and averaging four yards a carry, a total of 16. Second down. And we'll say seven, a long seven. Smith faking, wants to pass on the run, looking over the middle, and he's got Sim Nelson. Sim Nelson has enough for the first down as the reception is made right at the Michigan 44-yard line, then driven back to the 43. One of the keys to that play is that Steve Smith broke contain and got outside with blockers. Nelson was running in a parallel pattern along with him on the field. But Smith's ability to run forced those linebackers to come up closer to the line of scrimmage, and they left Sim Nelson alone, and Smith just dumped it over them to Nelson for the first down. Smith now three for four for a total of 86 yards. Nelson has uh, gathered in two of those uh, three receptions. That's first and 10 at the Michigan 44-yard line. Fullback Garrett, speedy, getting through. Nice opening over the middle. Good block there thrown by Dixon and Humphreys along with DiOrio. And he turns up close to the 50-yard line the market at the 49. Good play to run, too, because it was coming with a blitz. And you see how they flow. Tatum, those people, are flowing so quickly to the motion, to the side of the play. And when Garrett got the ball, he saw all those across his face. He just cut it back against the grain. So Garrett, two yards, carried in five carries. Michigan now second and four at the 49, the Michigan 49-yard line. Rodgers trying to find running room. No go that time. Dave Morrill, the defensive tackle in there, whose dad used to play football and basketball at Michigan, making the tackle. Penich up at the line of scrimmage on a play where you hand the ball to the tailback deep. If you allow penetration to the line of scrimmage, your tailback's going to have trouble. Michigan three for four in the going now for the first down. They are third and three. And trying to get the first down, 83 yards at the 50-yard line. Smith coming up the middle, has the first down to the 45, 44-yard line. Looked as if he was hit just about the 47. Somehow got a couple of more yards out of it. Straight quarterback draw, Ray. Watch the Michigan offense take the rush to the outside. There is Dixon doing a good job. Nice block by Garrett on Tatum. And Tatum comes up and makes the hit, but not after Smith had the first down. Good call. Third down play, play. Passing situation. Run Smith on a safe quarterback draw. So Smith has carried four times now for a total of 15 yards. Garrett and Rogers are running backs in behind Steve Smith. First and 10 of 44 of Ohio State. Hand off is to Rogers. Good blocking. Grabbing him first up there was Orlando Lawry. At the 40-yard line. So about four yards on the effort by Rodgers that time. But once again, Ray, Ohio State really flowing fast to the football. A cutback play by the back. Bo Schembechler probably wants those tailbacks, as soon as they get the ball, to look away, backside of the hole, to see if they can run the cutback. Second and six. 
Well, Michigan now two for four in their third down conversion. Pitch out to Rodgers. First down, driven out of bounds at the 30-yard line. Kelvin Bell leading the way for Ohio State to drive Rodgers out of bounds. Big play because Michigan ran it. Look at Rodgers in motion to the left, then coming back to the right. Quick pitch, and they get outside Byron Lee. That's the first time Michigan ran that kind of motion and then turned the tail back. Back the other way, and option. All right, Rodgers has got up now for a total of 71 yards on eight carries. And, of course, one of the big ones was his 47-yard gallop in the first quarter. And the reason, one of the reasons that play worked, Ray, is because Ohio State is flowing so quickly to the ball. Any kind of a counter play, misdirection will work. At that time, it was a misdirection option. Being wide to the left, Mark Ray wide to the right. And it's Garrett on the carry, running straight up inside the 20-yard line. Great fake that time by the quarterback, Smith, finally brought down by Sean Gale. And once again, give credit to the option. Look at this. Everybody is flowing and running way by the ball. Now Garrett cuts it back, actually, over the left guard. The play was designed to go to the right outside. Garrett cut it back right there. Ohio State's flowing so quickly to the ball, that natural hole opened up. Garrett now with 34 yards on the ground in six carries. Michigan with a first down at the 18-yard line of Ohio State. First and 10. Michigan leading 10 to 7. Smith keeps it up the middle inside the five-yard line. Tripped up by Bell. Also a little help in there from Hill. You can't say it enough, Ray. Once again, the hole opened up way back inside. Look at everybody from Ohio State flow. Look at them all running out of there. Keenum overruns the ball. Smith cuts it back up over the center, and Ohio State, their speed and quickness flowing to the ball, trying to stop Michigan outside. Michigan is just countering by cutting every play they run back against the grain. On that last carry by Smith, he has a total of 29 yards and five carries right now, and Michigan has got three first downs and three plays. First and goal out line of Ohio State. Long count. Handoff is to Garrett, piled up. Just at the three yard line, driving straight ahead. Yard. So be second and goal, three yards to get in, and Bo Schembechler wanting nothing better to get six more points up on the board. A story against Bo, of course, against Ohio State. You saw the stats. However, the last two years he remembers because they were both defeats. Schembechler in this ball game, looking for his 140th victory. That's coming to Member win. In the Big Ten. Second and goal, three yards out. Rodgers, slanting, driving. It was good blocking by Garrett, maybe just shy of that touchdown inside the one yard line. Straight power football on the goal line. This is where Ohio State would use Byers because of his great size. Michigan does not have a back like Byers. They might run a fullback, but they'll finesse you a little bit more on the goal line than Ohio State will. All right, Bean comes out, and Michigan will go with two fullbacks, and Steve Smith now elects to call for a timeout with a minute and 48 seconds to go in the first half and knocking on the door of Ohio State. Michigan leading by 10-7, to 7, but it's an idea that Smith wants to be sure exactly what Bo wants. We're this close to getting some. Let's make it right. Exactly. Not only is that is running down, there's a minute 48. It's not terribly critical at this point, you know, timeout situation, because you won't have the ball later anyway. Ohio State's timeout's more critical to them. Running behind Garrett, does not make the plane of the goal line. Steve Beckler, the other reason I'm good, because you're on the one yard line, a five yard penalty for delayed game, miscommunication could be very, very costly. Take them like this against Ohio State, Ray. Well, Michigan has used six minutes and 56 seconds on the clock on this drive that's consisted so far of 13 plays and knocking at the door right now outside the goal line and just inside the one-yard line. Smith has had five carries for a total of 27 yards. Armstrong has checked in, so they've got Armstrong in and Garrett, a couple of the fullbacks, Lament, Rick Rogers. Two tight ends, Cannons and Nelson. So a lot of power, beef it in. Third goal. Time's going by motion. Rogers diving. Stood him up. And Ohio State. Rogers couldn't get in. Big tried to dive in. 
he looked at the net. But Rod tried to dive in, and Ohio State came up big right at the point of attack, and it was down underneath. It was Tatum who forced it to jump, and number 98, out of Detroit, came up from the top and right the way to Rodgers and denied him to his own fourth and a half a foot. Michigan's right. Going forward is right arm on the right wing, the right side of the eye. Scary. Andrews. One motion again. And the whistle sounds just about a, a, a snap. A flag is down in the end zone of Ohio State. And it's going to be against Michigan. Calling it a delay again and again. It didn't seem like they took a lot of time on that. It going, but that delay game cost Michigan made the field goal. So they mark it back, back to the late game. Means the field goal will come in. Bob Bond will try for his second field goal of the afternoon. So the Wolverines were inches away from a possible time to the time and move back. And that means Berger back in for second third of the afternoon. And uh, one uh, and second to the attack. 22 yard effort. <laughs> Kick is up. And it's no good. So, costly mistake again. Nothing results on a score. Ohio State fans are jubilant. Michigan fans are disappointed. 10-7, the score remains. We've got a timeout. Ohio State gets a big break. It's Michigan went seven yards for a 22-yard field. Got nothing from it. At taking seven minutes and 47 seconds off the clock. We're down to the bottom of break. Gets back to the job. Back to the 18. Out of the line of the Another look at the field goal, Jim. Well, look, he just did one kick right straight, but it got it over the right crossbar, the right upright. Just near this is by the by right. Reverse right, 15 out of 16 this year, and now 15 out of 17. Discussion, of course, the Ohio State's best test of that. Talking with his coach, Joe Brewer, talking about Bo Shepard, Joe Brewer, Joe Brewer, and Ohio Long. And he had 34 wins and sources coming out of this one. Time to tap. Bonds, by the way, as that discussion continues over the bench, that's the source of John Bruce. Out he's again taking over the home 17 carries 48 yards. So he's got the big one back and carried for six times for a total of 30 uh, yards for Ohio. There's your awesome support and feel like very good athlete. That's a support that is. It's the only life for a kicker, right? You make it in your hair. Nobody talks to you. <laughs> I taught you. That's right. Second and nine. Fires again. Fires submarine that time. It was Cooper moving up quickly, just a couple of yards behind him, and submarine in there to make the stop on Byers. Timeout, Michigan, with 39 seconds remaining. And it'll be third and three when we resume for Ohio State, and they'll give Tom Zach a chance to go back over. That was 39 seconds. It was time out. That means that Michigan has used all timeouts. All South State has a something. We talked a little bit earlier, right? About, you know, the possibility you can use that timeout down on the one yard line to avoid getting the delay of game. And then came up on the next play from the half yard line and got the delay of game, missed the field goal. Now that timeout becomes costly because they did not score. They could use their third one after a third down play if they stopped Ohio State. And maybe would have had a little bit of chance with a few seconds left to try to throw a bomb to try to get something out of it. But now it looks like Ohio State, if they don't get the first down, will be able to run out the clock fairly quick enough so that Michigan won't have an opportunity to get the ball back. Ohio State has used 31 yards here in the first half, and uh, certainly Tom Zach has done a good job in the passing department. He's 7 of 9 for a total of 90 yards. There have been 24 plays from the rushing department for the Buckeyes for a total of 84 yards. So a total uh, offense of 174 yards, but the Buckeyes trailing by a score of 10 to 7. A little counter play that time, going no place, and Mike Mallory you'll find at the bottom of that pile for Michigan, down to 30 seconds remaining in the first half. Fourth down, and uh, three uh, yards needed by Ohio State. The Buckeyes, I think, will take plenty of time if they get this one away. Well, if the referee calls delay a game with one or two seconds left, that would be a 25-second clock. If he lets the clock run out, I think you'll see Michigan upset because <laughs> they did mark the ball ready for play with about 27 seconds left. And we're down to five seconds remaining now. And 
Wait a minute now. Just about the time they were indicating the end of the half, a flag went down, which it should have done. And, of course, uh, Ohio State will be penalized. Will not end the half with the penalty. That punt will still be uh, booted. And the Michigan coaches are saying there was six, there should have been six seconds left on the clock. And they are right. When the timeout, when the flag would have been thrown for 25 seconds. Now they're going to put four seconds back up on the clock. So we talk about compromise. No, so, now they're going down to one, Ray. Now it's one, so it's not a complete compromise. Right, the Michigan coach is saying there should have been six seconds yep. left because they marked them already for play at uh, 31 seconds, but no chance. And Ohio State will not punt. Instead, Tom Zach on a keeper. Senchich makes his tackle. Uh, that will be the end of the first half. It was not sent it, by the way. Just about to get underway. Rich Spangler, number 10, setting it up. Evan Cooper, number 21. And Rogers, 20 for Michigan. As Michigan will wait for the kickoff to get the second half underway. And we are underway, driving Rogers deep into the end zone. That ball bouncing through. And Michigan will put it in play at the 20-yard line on the touchback. So, the second half of certainly one of the greatest rivalries in college football between the University of Michigan and Ohio State getting underway. The Wolverines clinging to a three-point lead as you take a look at those halftime stats for the first two quarters. And you can toss out the first downs, take a look at the rushing. Michigan dominating the rushing department. Passing has been consistent on both sides. The yardage-wise, Michigan belongs to it with a total of 237, but leading only 10 to 7 in this game. First and 10. And Smith giving to his fullback, Garrett, straight ahead, stopped by Tatum and Lee, the linebackers from the right side. Michigan giving a ball to the fullback. First play in the second half, Ray. I think just to make those linebackers conscious, to stay inside, stay inside, or we'll hit you with the fullback. Come back probably now with some kind of an option, maybe go back outside. Garrett, two yards on that carry. Second down and eight for Michigan. Now they split Bean and Mark Ray wide on the right side. Sim Nelson, the tight end, is wide on the left side. Rolling down to the right side on the keeper was Smith, but not going too far as Backus is in there to plant the shoulder to him. Came back outside with the option. Steve tried to cut it back inside. And back has beat the block of Art Philordis, number 59. Or he could have pitched that ball out. Here it is. Rodgers is open out there. But you see, Backus took on the block by Belordis, then came back inside to tackle Smith. Good Against play. A Buckeye defense like that, what do you have to do to be successful with that option? Well, if they're going to fight outside like that, you've got to pitch the ball to the trail back. Third and six for Michigan. Smith back to pass. Now, going back to his fullback, Garrett, and it was low and incomplete. He took a look at his tight end, decided he would not go to Sim Nelson. And then I would think maybe it was, might have been his third man he wanted to go to. It was a fullback, and maybe Garrett had gone a little too far out to the left. Plus, Steve was feeling the blitz and feeling the pressure. They didn't come with a blitz, but they were beginning to come off blocks. And Steve was beginning to feel that, so he went to the checkoff man. But he had had so much time, that checkoff pass was too far away. Bracken in there to punt. He had a disastrous one in the second quarter of only 17 yards. Garcia Lane waiting for it. He'll take it around the 49-yard line. Hewlett is in there to down it at the 48-yard line of Ohio State. So not a great punt and no run back that time by Garcia Lane. Before Ohio State goes on offense, we've got a timeout. So after the short punt by Bracken, Ohio State with good field position at the 50-yard line, first and 10. Ohio State staying at the 50-yard line. Barry Walker, the fullback on that carry. And again, not getting anything. And we haven't seen Vaughn Brodnax, the starting uh, fullback for Ohio State, as there's an injury on the field. And Michigan's Mike Mallory went down to a knee and is now coming off. But uh, Michigan gets a quick injury timeout. Mallory getting help from Russ Miller and Rex Thompson. But we haven't seen Vaughn Brodnax almost all game, but here he comes in the game now. Brodnax in the backfield for Walker. He'll be teamed up with Byers, and those are two very big people in that 
eye back situation for the Buckeyes. We saw Mallory come off of there. That means Andy Moeller has gone into the linebacking, the sophomore out of Ann Arbor. Second down and throwing on the run because of a lot of pressure applied by Michigan was a quarterback Tom check. It is incomplete. So it'll be third down and 10 for the Buckeyes. Michigan gambling well, coming with a blitz from the outside from Carlton Rose. And even though he got the pass off, Ray, the blitz forced him to throw it early, and that's what forced the ball to be incomplete. So third down and 10. That ball remaining at the 50-yard line. Exactly where the Buckeyes had gotten it. Tom Jack wanting to pass again. Plenty of time. Going to Anderson. Almost intercepted by Cooper. It is incomplete. Cooper trying to pick it off at the 23-yard line. And so the Buckeyes face with a fourth and ten. Still at the 50. Ball was underthrown. And Evan Cooper had an opportunity to pick it off. Probably would have been a, a good interception. Get better field position than with a kick. You see Cooper react back to it. Ball's thrown low and it just slips through. Cooper back there now to take the punt at his 10-yard line. Edwards in punt formation. Carl Edwards, the senior, out of Groveport, Ohio. Left-footed kicker gets one away. It's a beauty. Deep and heading for the end zone. Touchback. Boy, Edwards really got his foot into that one. And Michigan will go to the 20-yard line to start this next series of downs. A very good series, though, by the Michigan defense as they stopped Ohio State. Ohio State had good field position on the 50-yard line, and they didn't get anything out of it. And that's good first series by the Michigan defense to stop Ohio State. Now Michigan's got to get a couple first downs. If we're going to play a game of field position in the second half, Michigan's got to get it out, get some first downs. Michigan will employ double tight end. Caddis in there, number 81 on the left side. Sim Nelson on the right side. Garrett. And Rodgers, the running backs. First and 10 at the 20-yard line of the Wolverines. Rodgers gets the call, driving straight ahead, maybe three yards. At the bottom of the pile was Tatum, also in there. It was Lowry, and the other linebacker, Clark Backus. Three yards, second down and seven at the 23 of Michigan. 10 to three the score, with 12 minutes and 25 seconds to go in the third quarter. The story on Rodgers this afternoon for a total of 74 yards. Now Mark Ray and Bean are split wide on the left side. Mark Ray in the flanker position, Bean split as a split in on that left side. Fake to the fullback on the keeper this time. And I'll tell you, Ohio State did a splendid job of covering the tailback. Rodgers, that's why we did not see the pitch. Exactly. Rodgers was out there, and Steve Smith looked to pitch to him, but he saw that he was covered. Smith comes down the line left it's an option counter type fake to hold the linebackers now he's on the corner now he looks to pitch but he sees that Rodgers is taken then Steve just has to eat the football because there was no play there at all you saw a Lowry come up there and make the hit on him and number two Sean Gale was a fellow that was following Rodgers causing no pitch third down and seven Wolverines the lone back is Garrett passing situation and firing complete to Mark Ray. Mark Ray takes it and gathers it in at the 32-yard line. Lane in there to make the tackle. Garcia Lane, first down, Wolverines. Mark Ray is the inside receiver of two wideouts out there. He just comes up and turns it in just inside the first down yard, Parker. And I'll tell you, that's a very good tackle out there by Garcia Lane because had Mark Ray gotten away from him, turned it around, we might have seen what we saw at Minnesota last week. That means a long gallop. Touchdown bow. Good fake. Going deep. Intended this time to Sim Nelson. They say complete at the 38-yard line of Ohio State as Sim Nelson was battling the out-of-bounds line, and the official said he stayed in bounds. That is a great catch, and I'm not so sure he stayed in bounds, Ray. Play ball. action on the option. Smith goes back. He sees the backside receiver uncovered. Now he comes back over to Sim Nelson, who's running straight down the sideline. Nelson turns in the air. Now see if he's got a foot down and possession. Ooh. Oh, it's awful close. Awful close. Thought he was on the line. 29 yards. They give him on the reception. Third pass that Nelson has gathered in this afternoon for a total of 49 yards. First and 10. Rick Rogers tripped up, reaching in there that time. 
Cresilius the tackle from the left side. Boy, had Rick Rogers kept his feet, he'd have had some distance right over the middle of that Ohio State defense. He got to the 36-yard line, a couple of yards on the carry, second down and eight. Ten minutes, 34 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Michigan in front of Ohio State by a score of 10 to 7. There's the young man that made that last stop. He's a junior out of Ashland, Ohio. And last week was a UPI Defensive Player of the Week in the Big Ten. At the 36, second and eight. Fake to Armstrong, the fullback. Smith looking. And now sideline pattern. And Bean could not hang on to it. He was drifting around a 23, 22 yard line. And I think he was worried of staying inbounds and didn't make the reception. Yeah, he was. Vincent has made three or four of these catches this year where he's able to balance himself on the sideline. This time he's all right, but he just cannot hold on to the ball. Both feet inbounds but he's got to make the catch. So it goes for an incompleted pass. Third down and eight for the Wolverines. Ball still at the 36-yard line. Cattis, a tight end, comes out. Mark Ray, wide receiver on the left side. Bean split wide on the right. Nelson on the left side as a tight end. Blitz. And going to Mark Ray. Can't hang on to it. Took a lusty hit that time from Gale and Bell. Off the fingertips. Gale coming in there as well as Bell. Michigan did a good job picking up the blitz. Watch Rick Rogers. He takes Backus. Now Smith's got time. He comes open right there in that scene. Now he's got the ball. Does he have possession? Referees ruled no. That is not a fumble, rather an incompleted pass. As those Ohio State secondary people, we told you how experienced they were and how they come up and they'll really hit you. That time it caused an incomplete pass. Line of scrimmage at the 36, Bracken back at the 50-yard line, trying to maybe get it out of bounds if he can. The near side of the field, Garcia Lane standing around the 10-yard line. Bracken pointing high, high, Spiro, and that one will float in and out of the end zone. So Bracken is disgusted with himself. He got too much foot into it, and it'll be brought out to the Ohio State 20-yard line. Timeout, Wolverines clinging to a three-point lead. Ohio State getting ready now to go to the line of scrimmage at the 20-yard line. 106,115 on hand here at Michigan Stadium to see this 80th meeting between these two universities. 10 to 7, Michigan leading. We're in the third quarter. Contact made as Sanchez comes across and makes contact on Joe Dooley, the center. Flags go down. We'll wait for the call. Procedure against Michigan, so it'll go against the Wolverines. Take a look at that catch by uh, Sim Nelson again. Is he in bounds? It's awful close to tell you. The referee is closer even than our end zone replay camera, Ray, so I guess uh, the referee called it good. It's good. First and five now. Five-yard penalty against the Wolverines. Marks it to the 25-yard line. Byers, and he picked the spot. Lott gets over there and downs him on a rolling tackle that time. You can see a little problem with Lyles coming on the left side. They took Lyles out as well as Brooks. And that gave Byer some running room. Well, they give it to him and it's a power off tackle. And again, all he needs is a crease. He sees it once he has passed the line of scrimmage, then you got problems. Lott has got to come over and all he can do is get in front of him, slow him down some, get help from Gant coming over and that's what happened. Byers brought it up to the 44-yard line of Ohio State. First down and 10. Byers has picked up 77 yards on the ground now. He gets the call again, spinning and churning and getting close to the 48-yard line. Again, you hit Byers around the midsection or higher, it's not going to do any good. You have got to hit him in the legs below the knees. If you get into a strength battle with him above the waist, you're, you're going to have a load on your hands. Rodney Lyles in there on that stop. Four yards on the carry by Byers that time. Second down and six at the 48-yard line of Ohio State. Wolverines 10, Ohio State 7, eight minutes and 56 seconds to go in the third quarter. Fake to Byers. Tom Zach firing, and a pass was trying to be completed down there as it was... Jamison trying to make the reception, couldn't do it. Flags have gone down. You see Tomzak getting a blitz coming late from Mike Mallory, number 42. Tomzak throws, 
It's a little bit hurried, and Jamison covered well over there by Cochran. See what the flag is, right? Flag against the Buckeyes. Discussion of what Michigan wants to do with it. Motion and uh, declined by the Wolverines. So they'll turn over the down box to make it third and six. A little confidence that time on your defensive unit. Big play here for the defense. Ohio State sending Anderson wide on the left side. Jamison wide on that right side. Tom Zach faking and going over the middle to Jamison. It is complete and run out of bounds at the Michigan 42 yard line. Finally brought down by Cochran. Ohio State caught Michigan in a blitz situation. They had single coverage on their outside people. And Jamison just comes over the middle real shallow but he's four yards in front of Cochran because Cochran started four yards behind him, and it's a tough situation to put a defensive back in on one-on-one. -on -one. Take a look at how they block it. Both linebackers coming, and offensively up front, Ohio State picks him up. First and 10 at the Michigan 42-yard line. Here's Byers again, and Byers was greeted by Mallory that time, along with Tim Anderson, just about after he got a yard and shoved back. They may give him uh, two yards on the carry. They do. Line of scrimmage, 42. The market at the 42nd down and eight. Eight minutes and five seconds to go in the third quarter. Ohio State on a drive. Meanwhile, the Michigan bench concerned a little bit of trying to stop this drive of the Buckeyes. That started back at the 20-yard line and now at the Michigan 40. Tomzak looking. Has a man open. Complete to Anderson. Gets away from one would-be tackler. Cooper on a chase and drives him out of bounds inside the 19-yard line of Michigan. So the big catch that time by Cedric Anderson. Anderson goes out from his wide receiver spot against Michigan zone and just comes up underneath and runs a curl pattern. Now again, Michigan on a blitz with Mallory coming. Now overrunning the ball is Cochran. Now a good move here by Anderson to get outside of Cooper, and a block is thrown on Gann. Now Cooper's the only guy to keep him from out of, bound, out of going the distance. Anderson now with a couple of catches for a total of 36 yards. And Ohio State first to 10 at the Michigan 18-yard line. Fake for the fullback. Now the pitch on the option play. Byers chased by Gant. Byers in. Touchdown, Ohio State. Perfect timing that time by Tom Zach on his pitch. You don't see Ohio State run the option much because Steve Smith, or rather Mike Tom Zach, is not the option quarterback that Steve Smith is. But this time they got it working and they come outside. Now Tom Zach does a good job holding on to the ball. He's got Rodney Lyles in a pickle. Lyles has to stop the quarterback. Now it's out there. Almost a clip out there by Anderson, but he got the pitch out late. Gant one on one with uh, Byers is not going to do the job. And Byers gets into the end zone and Ohio State goes in front. A good impressive drive by Ohio State with a couple of key passes on third down. And certainly the Buckeyes not using a lot of plays, only seven plays to move the 80 yards capped off on the 18-yard pitch out to Byers and going in for the score. Spangler to try for the extra point. His kick is up and his kick is good. And so the Buckeyes for the first time this afternoon have gone in front of the Wolverines of Michigan. Score, Buckeyes 14. Buckeyes all set to kick off now and having the lead for the first time. Terry Smith, number 23, joins Rick Rogers at the goal line for Michigan. And Kerry Smith will not bring it out. So with 7.34, Michigan uh, put the ball in play at the Wolverine 20-yard line. Certainly the championship game not up for grabs in this one. Unusual that maybe Illinois is already taking care of that, but a piece of second place at stake between the Buckeyes, of course, and the University of Michigan. Two minutes and 23 seconds taken on only seven plays for the Buckeyes to get in for that last score and to go ahead. Of course, the Wolverines with the win today would be gladly accepting a bid to the Sugar Bowl. If not, the Buckeyes would go if they pull off the victory. And, of course, the Fiesta Bowl also enters the picture. First and 10. Smith rolling out, looking for somebody, trying to find somebody. Has Bean open at the 39. And a roll no catch at the 39 as Bean was really hit by Kelvin Bell. That's good pass defense when you got a receiver open and he's on the sideline. 
and he catches the ball. If you can knock it loose that close to the sideline, you're going to get the call from the official on an incompletion. Here it is. Bean has it. Does he have possession? Referee was standing behind him. That's close. If he has possession, it's Michigan's ball where it went out of bounds. If he doesn't, incomplete pass. All right, now the Buckeye fans, Jay, uh, happy, cheery. Their team on top, 14-10. Second down and 10 for the Wolverines at the 20-yard line. Garrett and Rick Rogers are running backs in behind Steve Smith. Bean wide to the left, Mark Ray wide to the right. And again, Smith wanting to go to the air. He's looking for Bean. Has him open. Can't hang on to him. Pass a little bit low, but catchable at the 36-yard line, and Bean could not hang on to it. He was covered by Garcia Lane. Boy, Vince Bean's had his hands on two of them right in a row. Good pass by Smitty. Little bit low. It's kind of wobbly. It's a tough pass to catch. Vince Bean got his hands on it. thing about it is he couldn't get his body in front. If he could have gotten his body in front of it going down, he might have been able to cradle it in. But it hit off his hands and went incomplete. All right, Smith was 5 for 7 in the first half. Now here in the second half, he's 5 for 11 in the ballgame for a total of 126 yards. Third down and 10, still at the 20-yard line of Michigan. Passing situation for the Wolverines. Smith back. Good protection. Fires it. Complete. And has the first down. That was Rick Rogers coming out of the backfield to gather in his first reception of the afternoon. Third time's a charm, I guess, right? Rogers was out there at a wingback position. He just curls in behind the linebackers. Tough throw by Smith. And a nice catch right on stride by Rick Rogers. Big third down completion by the Wolverines. And right, Michigan has come out after Ohio State has scored and thrown the ball on every down. Okay, doctor, mark it at the 42. First and 10. Nelson at Cadis in there, double tight end for Michigan. Handoff is the fullback. That's Garrett driving close to the 48 yard line. They may mark it at the 47. Nelms, the nose guard, making a tackle. Here it is again, Ray. And once again, Michigan throwing the ball on four successive plays. Those linebackers have to loosen up just a little bit. They get good blocking at the point of attack, and you see Garrett pushing and hustling for every yard, and you can get a first down play going five yards for you. You've done a good job up front. And he got five yards on that carry, mark it at the 48, second down and five for the Wolverines. Garrett again, and Garrett stumbling, trying to drive for the first down, may have enough for that first down, got close to the 47-yard line, and he got just past the 46, that's all he needed. First down, Wolverines. Market at the 46. Once again, all that is up front. The blocking again as Garrett runs behind, behind the pursuit. He cuts it back, gets tripped up. Eddie Garrett now coming off the field. He's being replaced by Greg Armstrong. Looks like he might have an equipment problem or something. He doesn't look like he's seriously hurt. Lost the contact, I believe, Jim. Lost the contact? Contact lens, I think. And he was lucky. Might have just popped out of his hand because he was carrying it, giving it to the trainer. First and 10 at the 46-yard line of Ohio State. Michigan in possession. You've seen what Smith has done so far. He's 50% so far in this ballgame through the air. Hand off to Rick Rogers. Trying to go wide. Couldn't do it. Sean Gale in there. The cornerback from the right side. Moving up quickly to make the stop and a loss on the carry by Rogers. When Michigan runs double tight ends, Ray, Ohio State comes up and supports very quickly on both corners. And everything outside is taken away by the cornerbacks who are in that secondary. They're almost acting like linebackers when Michigan gets up in that two tight end offense. That's how Gale got up there so quickly because he's almost playing a linebacker when they come out with two tight ends. For the first time this afternoon, Kerry Smith has checked in at the line of scrimmage. He'll serve as a wing back on that left side. Rogers out of the lineup. Second down and 10 for the Wolverines. Smith back to pass, looking for somebody. Got a couple open. Sim Nelson makes the reception, breaks the tackle, tripped up by Lane, fumble. They'll roll the ball dead at the Ohio State 33-yard line. They ran Sim Nelson from a tight end position right out into the flat. He will be coming out to your right. He's the first receiver. Ohio State with a three-man rush and eight men in coverage. And this flat area is where the opening is in the zone. And once Nelson gets by Tatum, the linebacker, then he gets a block on the corner from Mark Cray right here, and he's able to run over and get enough yards for the first down. He gets a good block on Garcia Lane. Mark Cray did. 
All right, first down for the Wolverines at the 33-yard line of Ohio State, first and 10. And it's Garrett that time going straight ahead. Might have got a yard, two at the most, just uh, sort of a slant to the left side. Once again, Michigan goes with a pass, then comes back on their next play and runs a fullback off tackle, forcing those linebackers, the inside backers, Backus and, and uh, Tatum, to stay inside. They can't skate out of there as quickly. Now it's a chess game. Which way will Bo go with this play? Does he run an option outside? Does he go back to throw? That's why the linebackers right now are in that position of guessing. That time it was the defensive line. Nelms and Morrill in there for the stop. By the way, Sim Nelson, four catches this afternoon, total of 62 yards. Second down and eight for the Wolverines. Smith now coming up the middle on the draw. And he got close to the 25-yard line. Then took a good, vicious hit. Brasilius in there, along with Bacchus. Straight quarterback draw. Now watch again, Michigan's defensive line pushes everybody to the outside. Smith cuts off the block against Nelms. Now it's number 17, Bacchus Ray, who makes that big hit. But a pretty decent hole in there for Steve Smith and an Ohio State player down on the field. You see Smith cut it back. Now you don't think these guys are playing hard-nosed football? Check Bacchus putting the helmet right on the numbers of Steve Smith. Good hard-nosed clean football. That's Byron Lee, the outside linebacker, a sophomore out of Columbus, Ohio, being assisted off the field now for the Buckeyes. So hobbling his way back to the Ohio State bench. Now we'll check to see who they bring in in place of the injured Byron Lee. Michigan now faced with a third and three at the 26-yard line of Ohio State. Dennis Houston senior out of Toledo checks in in the place of Byron Lee at the outside linebacker on that right side and you might see Michigan try to go after him right now third and three Rick Rogers back in there on the wing on the right side Garrett the running back in behind Smith Smith wants to go to the air needs three yards comes out to Garrett they're gonna be shy of the first down at the 24 yard line let him a little too much but he made the catch Houston in there to cover yeah and Michigan wanted to go to the tight end Sim Nelson Smith looks down the field for him He's not open. He's covered. Smitty comes off to the checkoff back, throws it a little bit in front of him, makes a nice reception, but they mark the ball short of the first down. Michigan's got about fourth and a yard and a half, maybe two. Just trickling inside the 25-yard line. Need about a yard and a half for that first down. We'll say fourth and two at the 25-yard line. Michigan lines up. The Wolverines are going to try to go for that first down. Needing a couple of yards. Rodgers and Garrett's a running back. Now Smith failing to following his blockers he's gonna be I believe a little bit shy it'll be close but a shy maybe of a half a yard for that first down lost his footing too when he made that pivot yeah I did what happened is they get penetration Ray. check it out Smith fakes to the fullback now he comes out and he's got to jump over Houston number 58 if Houston weren't there Ben Smith might have had the distance to get the first down. Double back fake inside. Now Smith tries to follow it, but Houston is on the ground. He's got to try to go over Houston, and he can't. And that's a big play by that linebacker just coming in for the injured Byron Lee. And on two occasions, he's done a good job. Both times, Michigan has gone at his side, and both times, Houston came up with the play. All right, Smith got about a half yard on that carry. Michigan came up shy of a yard for the first down, and so... Ohio State takes over at its own 25-yard line, first and 10. Long count this time by Tom Zag. Goes to Byers on a handoff, slips outside. Cooper giving chase, and Lott at the bottom. Cooper and Lott making the tackle. A flag is down at the 29-yard line of Ohio State. We've got two minutes and 45 seconds to go in the third quarter. The Buckeyes leading 14 to 10. Holding call on the wide receiver to that side of the field, Ray. Byers goes outside. And the defensive back out there is John Lott. You see Cooper is coming in there, but Lott over there was being held by number 22 before the play got to him, and that's where the flag was thrown. Michigan clogs it up to inside and forces Byers to go outside. So for the first time this afternoon, a major penalty against one of these ball clubs, and that goes against Ohio State. Mark back to the 15-yard line, a 10-yard penalty against the Buckeyes. Here's a big series now for the Michigan defense. They've got Ohio State in the hole at their own 15. Got to come up with the big plays here and kind of generate some excitement and enthusiasm on that offense because the offense really been bogged down since the first quarter. Wideouts for Ohio State. Jemison on the right side. Anderson on the left side. 
Domzak firing, looking for Jemison. Broken up by Cochran over there at the 40-yard line. Good defensive play by Michigan's Brad Cochran as the sophomore from Royal Oak steps in and flips it away. Really good. Now, they're trying to hit that seam again. And you see Cochran going up. That's the same play earlier in the game that they had hit. Uh, I think it was Jemison again, but that was John Lott who tipped it earlier, and then Jemison caught it. This time, Lott was back there fur enough so that he was able to get a hand on it, and Earl Bruce took a shot by his uh, by uh, Tony Gant, the safety coming over there, trying to get into it. Looked like he caught it in the shoulder. Earl went down, got up, and called the next play. That's a tough coach. <laughs> Didn't even ask for the trainer. Not yet. Second at 20 for the Buckeyes at the Buckeye 15-yard line. Tom Zach getting pressure this time and firing complete. Nice catch by the tight end, Frank, that time. Five yards shy of the first down, made the reception of the 30. Well, you see, Michigan's defense isn't ready. They're, they're coming up. They're not really set. Tom Zach rolls right. And he's getting heavy pressure from both Anderson and Lyles. But again, because of the blitz outside, it's one-on-one -on -one coverage with Frank and Tommy Hassel. Hassel just can't stay with him and give Tom's that credit under that pressure, able to get the ball out there to him. Frank has made four receptions, a big tight end, good for 41 yards for Ohio State. It's now third down and five at the 30 of the Buckeyes. Tom Zach wants to go to the air again, goes over the middle complete. And Cooper in there to make the hit, but not until Jemison had brought the ball in for a completion at an Ohio State first down at around the 36-yard line, 37 of the Buckeyes. Another little crossing pattern underneath. Michigan had it defended better than they had earlier when Ohio State got a big first down. Again with the blitz, single coverage, and Cooper has to come off his coverage, delivers a big, big blow up there to Jemison but he's able to hold on to the football. That's a good job of concentration by Jemison, and then Cooper holds on for help from Anderson. Tom Zach has gone to the air 17 times, completed 11 of those 17 attempts for a total of 134 yards, first and 10 at the 37 of the Buckeyes. Don't forget now, Ohio State leading in this game. Byers on the carry, wrapped up around the 39-yard line. 14 to 10, I score with a minute and 11 seconds to go in the third quarter. Mallory in there to greet Byers that time. One minute remaining in the third quarter. Ohio State leading by four. Their touchdown here in the third quarter by Byers on an 18-yard pitch out play to him. And the point after putting the Ohio State Buckeyes in front for the first time this afternoon. Second down and eight. Tom Zack. Lucky. And firing that time to Frank, overshot him at the 45. Lot covering on the play for Michigan, incomplete, third and eight. And another good defensive blitz coming by Michigan. Michigan has blitzed a lot on Tom Zach, forcing him to throw that ball early. They're gambling in their secondary, covering people one-on-one. -on -one. But Michigan is committing a lot of linebackers, outside linebackers, to that blitz, trying to get pressure on Tom Zach. All right, Buckeyes are one for three on third down conversions here in the second half. And for the ball game, a couple, uh, two for eight overall. Face with third and eight. Tom Zach wants to pass. And picked up by Cochran, intercepted. Cochran, flag has gone down. Cochran brings it back to the 29-yard line, 28-yard line. However, there is a flag at the 31 of Ohio State. We'll wait for the call. Michigan has possession. The call goes against Ohio State. Decline. It was holding. And the Buckeyes have coughed up the ball to Michigan. Cochran does a great job here of playing man-to-man -man defense. He did not give enough room out there for Jemison. And probably Tom Zach should have held on to the football because that was great one-on-one -on -one man defense by Cochran on Jemison in the corner. He came right up, read it perfectly, reacted to the ball when it was thrown, and got Michigan the ball back in a big play by the defense once again. Okay, mark it at the 28-yard line of Ohio State. 34 seconds remaining in the third quarter. First and 10 for the Wolverines as the Buckeyes turn it over on the interception. Fake to Garrett. Smith carries. Might have got a yard at the most. In there to get the shoulder on him was Backus. Had some other help from the linebacking core of Laurie. But it was Backus who made the first contact. And Michigan is running the option into the double tight end set. And that puts a lot of people up there on the line of scrimmage. You saw Backus make the hit. But also outside over there was the other linebacker. And Steve Smith just doesn't have room out there. 
when Orlando Lowry, the other linebacker, is out there along with the inside linebacker, that option's not going to go. Michigan got a yard out of that, and that is the end of the third quarter. So when we come back to start the fourth quarter, it'll be the Wolverines second and nine at the Ohio State 27. The Wolverines trailing by four. Final 15 minutes of this annual battle between Michigan and Ohio State coming up first play of the fourth quarter. Second down and nine at the 27 of Ohio State. Smith barking the signals to Rodgers. Rodgers just about to the line of scrimmage. And a real battle down there. Morrill, the tackle, making the first hit on Rick Rodgers, trying to come back over the middle and had no go. Might have got a yard. Got to get some blocking at the point of attack, Ray. And Michigan is allowing some penetration in there. And you've got to keep that penetration off the end of, out of your backfield in order for that tailback to make a cut. Kerry Smith checks in now in place of Rodgers. Lone back is Garrett. Third and eight. Smith looking for somebody. Double pump. And to Sim Nelson complete at the 15-yard line. First down, Michigan. Give credit to the Michigan offensive line for picking Ohio State up and allowing Smith to look off two other receivers. Looking right, nobody open. Looking middle, nobody open. Looking left for Nelson, his third receiver, standing on the sideline is kind of a safety valve just past the first down marker. You see Smitty looking off. Now he sees Nelson come free and drills it. Nelson just stands there, takes the hit, but it's a big first down pass. Nelson's fifth reception of the afternoon, 73 yards through the air for him. Smith is now 9 of 15 for a total of 173 yards. First and 10 for Michigan at the Ohio State 15-yard line. Hand off to Rodgers. A little daylight on that right side. Tiptoeing through so carefully from the 15-yard line down to the 9-yard line of Ohio State. Now, Ray, there's the difference you see where a team did not penetrate of a line of scrimmage. Rodgers gets the ball three yards in his backfield. Now, he's able to cut to the hole. It's back over the middle. He's able to cut back this way, find the crease, and get through it. When there's penetration in the backfield, that back has to make the cut too early. You saw Morrill, number 57, make the first hit back as the 17 was in there. Rodgers now carried for 15 uh, times for a total of 84 yards. Second down and four at the nine-yard line of Ohio State. Michigan faking this time to the pullback. Smith on the option to Rodgers to the five, down to the three-yard line. Upsetting Rodgers down there, Sean Gale, number two. But Michigan knocking on the door. They'll mark it at the three. Rick Rogers on the sideline, shaking up. Let's take a look at it. Down the line, the option. Now they have one guy, Houston, to option on. Caddis gets the block out there on Gale. Rogers goes right over the top into the three. Comes back into the game now. Here's another pitch, and look at it. Now Rogers levels it off right here, both hands on the ball, right up over the top, knowing that the first down yardage is inside the five. Gets it to the three. Rick Rogers with 90 yards on the afternoon comes out, and Perry Smith is into the game of tailback. Now they have marked that ball in between the two and three yard line. So a long two to get to the goal line. First and goal for the Wolverines. Perry Smith the tailback, Garrett the pullback, in behind Steve Smith, double tight end employed by the Wolverines. Hand off to Garrett, will go no place. Garrett now stretches out and maybe got a yard and a half very close now to the one yard line. But around his ankles, a young man by the name of Spencer Nelms making the important stop. They'll mark it at the one, so give him credit for about a yard and a half carry. Garrett now 12 carries, 50 yards, and Michigan knocking on the door at the one yard line. Don't forget they did that in the second quarter, couldn't capitalize on it. Now they have to capitalize. Trailing by four, second and goal from a yard out. Smith keeps touchdown. Every 
Everybody's looking to get him inside. They come with a fullback fake, and Backus is out there. The fullback runs off and blocks him, but Smitty with his speed is able to turn that corner. You saw 27, Doug Hill coming up to take Gary Smith the pitch back. When Steve Smith read that, he knew nobody would be outside. He only had a linebacker to beat, and with his speed, he was capable of going that last yard and putting Michigan on top. All right, Bergeron now would like nothing better to make this extra point down to the north end of the field through the uprights to put Michigan on top, 17-14. His kick is up. His kick is good. 12 minutes and 8 seconds to go in this ball game. Michigan has gone back on top, leading by 3, 17-14 over Ohio State. They placing that ball on the tee and all set to kick off to Wooldridge and Lindsay for Ohio State. Oh, how important turnovers are in a football game. And you can remember that interception by Cochran with 37 seconds to go in the third quarter to set up that drive by Michigan. Line shot that Lindsay elects not to touch, lets it sail out of the end zone, and the Buckeyes will put it in play at their 20-yard line. So the Wolverines, after the interception, got the touchdown. And it's Steve Smith on the action. Eddie Garrett, the fullback, got just enough of a piece of the uh, defensive linebacker back this to allow Smith to sneak into the end zone. But the key to the play again is the option running outside. Doug Hill came up to support against the pitch back, and Smith turned it up inside. So after the interception, Michigan uses seven plays to move 28 yards, taking three minutes and 26 seconds to do that. Capped off by Smith's one-yard run. Michigan on top, 17-14. 12 minutes and eight seconds to go in the ball game. An 80-yard march needed now by the Buckeyes of Ohio State at their own 21st and 10. Fake to Byers. And a pass is completed to Jemison. Jemison takes it at the 36-yard line. First down, Buckeyes. So it, interesting, Ray, that they come right back after Cochran made the interception on Jemison. They come right back to Jemison against Cochran, one-on-one. -on -one. Jemison makes it out cut 16 yards down the field. Tom Zack delivers it before the break, and Cochran was not able to react to it. The so Buckeyes, first and 10 at the Ohio State 36-yard line. Anderson wide to the right, Jemison wide to the left. The pitch goes to Byers. Gets around one man, and finally Cooper at the bottom of the pile with help from about three other Wolverines. Boy, they almost had him in the backfield for about a two or three yard yeah. loss, and I think it was Tim Anderson who came right through there and really overran the football. Coming in here, he sees the blitz out there. You see Anderson ran by the ball, and that was a great move by Byers to avoid Anderson and get back to his blockers. Byers now has carried a total of 25 times this afternoon for 115 yards, so he has gone over the 1,000-yard mark in the Big Ten this season. The top rusher, top scorer in the Big Ten. Fake to Byers again, Tom Zach firing, complete to Frank, I believe, is tied in. It is, and down at the 39-yard line, 38-yard line of Michigan. Ohio State is doing a good job here of mixing the pass and the run. Tom Zach gets good protection. Frank comes out underneath the linebackers, and he beats him and over into Cochran's area. He was able to come all the way across the field. You'll see him underneath, running all the way across the field. Tom Zach watching him the whole way, and Cochran has to come over from the corner position to make the hit. Well, didn't I used to say, in this ball game, it'd be a cloud of dust between Ohio State and Michigan. <laughs> Today, we are seeing passing. Tom Zach, 13 to 21 for 162 yards. Now looking for Byers, and boy, was their pressure ascension. Came in there and really belted Tom Zach just about the time that he released that ball. Not only that, but Michigan read that screen very, very well. Rodney Lyles followed Byers right out into the flat, and there was also a linebacker over there helping. That screen was not in there at all, and it was a wise decision by Tom Zach to throw that ball incomplete. So second and ten. As Earl Bruce does a little pacing right now, his team trailing by three, 17-14. Michigan fans are happy now since the Wolverines have gone back on top. Ten minutes and 57 seconds remaining in this ball game. Three-point difference. Fake this time to Byers. And fumble, Michigan! Watch Tom Zach that time. Coming back in, trying to get the ball. Rose on top of that ball, and Michigan has it as its own 39. Take a look at it. The give 
is in the middle. It looked like there was a mistake at snap or something. I don't know what happened, but Hammerstein came up with the football. We couldn't exactly see what happened underneath the center. Rose got the football after Hammerstein let go of it. But once again, Ray, we talked earlier, Bo Schembechler knows how turnovers can hurt you. Last year, they turned it over six times against Ohio State. Michigan lost. This time, Ohio State has turned it over. Tom Zach reacted that time, coming away from the center, did not have the ball, thought he had it. Instead, a turnover to Michigan. Giving it to Garrett. Garrett on extra effort that time across the 45-yard line to the 47, a gain of seven yards on the carry. Second down and three for the Wolverines. Down to 10.37 remaining. Michigan leading 17-14, but a costly fumble by Ohio State. Yes, Ohio State has had two costly turnovers here in the fourth quarter, actually one late in the third quarter when Cochran made the interception and then the fumble here by, it must have been Tom Zach because he never had the ball coming out from under center. Garrett has carried out 13 times, total of 58 yards on those 13 carries. Three yards needed for the first down. Garrett again gets the call. First down across the 50, down to the 47-yard line of Ohio State. Garrett on those last two plays has really been churning the legs. Dennis Houston, the linebacker for Ohio State, making a tackle. But once again, you see the fullback as he runs through that hole, Ray. Block back, come back, cut it back against the grain. Garrett has had a great season. He got off to a slow start, but I would say the nine games in conference play, he has been outstanding. And more than anything, he's been a blocking back, but with runner's ability, and we're beginning to see it here in this Ohio State game. First and ten, Wolverines. It's time to carry Smith. His first carry from the line of scrimmage this afternoon and gets to the 45-yard line. Just across the 45, they mark it back at the 45 now. Two-yard carry. It'll be second down and eight. Orlando Lawry, linebacker on that left side. Story on the turnovers today. Last year it was six for Michigan. Today, three by Ohio State. Big series. This whole drive now for Michigan is very big with a clock running down. Michigan can really put this game away if they go on a long drive and get points out of it. They need eight yards right now for a first down. Second and eight at the 45. And Smith going to the air, going deep. He's got Mark Ray over there, complete at the 20-yard line. Mark Ray somehow slipped in between three defenders. Buckeyes makes the reception and gets in at the 20, knocked out of bounds by Garcia Lane. A great pattern because Vincent Bean comes underneath and he's got Garcia Lane short. Now he turns it out beyond the linebacker and underneath the deep coverage, and Steve Smith drops this right in the bucket. What a great pass and a nice pattern. You see Vince Bean is out of the picture, but he is underneath. That held Garcia Lane long enough, and Mark Ray found that little zone open, and Smith dropped it in beautifully. Mark Ray has gone over the century mark in receptions as far as yardage this afternoon. Four catches for a total of 102 yards. First and ten. And Smith gets it back in. Picks up five, seven, eight yards. Close to the ten-yard line. Smith with a great effort finally down by Dennis Houston. Good running on the option by Steve Smith. And they caught Ohio State coming with a blitz from the back side. You see the linebackers coming. That means there aren't any people out here. Smith sees everybody flowing outside. Michigan blocking tough inside. Good move by Steve there to get by Tatum. And now he just uses his running ability to run through tackles and get extra yardage. He got eight yards on that carry. Second down and two for Michigan at the Ohio State 12-yard line. Smith 12 carries today for a total of 48 yards. Now going back, one-on-one, -on -one, intended for Nelson, and just sliding in there, getting his hand on the way was Doug Hill, weak side safety, making a good play. Once again, they came with the play-action fake. It looked like an option. You'll watch Kerry Smith going out here. It looks like the option. Now Smith pulls it back. The tight end delays. Smith tries to drop it over there, but two guys in his way. Dangerous pass there when you're in that close. You saw Backus, the linebacker, the inside dropping back. He was a shallow man working on Nelson. And then you saw Doug Hill, the safety, coming across and flicking away. Third down and two for the Wolverines at the 12 of Ohio State. Garrett on the handoff, close to the first down. Strikes to the 10-yard line. We'll wait till they unpile to see if they've got it. They'll mark it at the 10. We may get a measurement. Very close. Can't really tell from the end zone camera, 
but it looks like it's a first down that yard marker is right on the 10 yard line Ray it'll be very very close and I suspect that even if they don't have it Michigan will go for that first down. Inches, inches, no more than two or three for the first down. Fourth down and inches at the 10-yard line of Ohio State. Board of strategy time. Big play needed. Michigan leading 17-14, 8-21 to go in this ball game. As Jim told you, can they continue the drive and get in for some points, a touchdown, they could solve it away. And then they could get the Sugar Bowls ready. Garrett finding tough running room on that left side. He was greeted in there by Roland Tatum. It's very close to a first down. If the ball is marked over the 10 yard line, you see Garrett get the ball. Now he breaks it outside. Now here's where he gets it. He just rolls. They'll mark that ball over the 10. If the ball is completely over the 10 yard line, that will be a first down. Mark, bringing the chains in, right? And it's marked inside the 10 yard line. Needed at the most three inches. First down, Michigan. All right. Situation. Eight minutes and five seconds to go. Michigan just inside the Ohio State 10-yard line. Mark it at the nine. First and goal. Garrett has carried now 16 times for 66 yards. Garrett stays in there. His running mate. It's now Kerry Smith, the tailback, number 23. Double tight end employed by the Wolverines, Caddis and Nelson. Long count by Smith. Option coming up the way. Smith hangs on to it, fights for two yards, may settle for just one at the eight-yard line. Well, I'd like to see Steve pitch that ball out yes. a little bit because he's got a tailback back there. And he's got some running room because all night, all afternoon rather, Steve has been keeping that ball and turning it back up inside. He's got Kerry Smith out here. If he pitches the ball right there, Kerry Smith's going to have some room out there to run. You see 23 in your picture right there. Maybe we'll see it again the other way and we'll see the ball pitched. Second and goal at the eight. Garrett and Kerry Smith remain in as the running tandem. Dave Smith looking, got a man open, Cannis touchdown! Eric Cannis makes the reception, the junior from Cincinnati, Ohio, for his first reception of the year. It's a touchdown reception. And give credit to the call. Cannis is the backside end. It's a throwback pattern. Smith is looking right the entire time. Back comes Cannis across the field. A mistaken coverage wide open at the two. Touchdown. Give Michigan credit on the call, Ray, for having everything flow to the right. And Caddis just kind of floated over there, snuck out of everybody's way, and was hoping that Smith would see him. When he did, Caddis just rolled into the end zone. Bergeron checks in to try for the extra point. 6.57 remaining. Oh, ironic that a young man from Cincinnati, Ohio, makes the touchdown on the pass from Smith. Yes, kick is good. Flag has gone down. Wolverines with that extra point. It's against Ohio State. It is good. Wolverines 24, Ohio State 14. We'll be right back. Well, if you're a Michigan fan, you might be thinking the golden rule. Do unto others as they did to you. A year ago at Columbus, the same score. 24-14 Ohio State, of course, had the 24. That's the same score we have here at Michigan Stadium this afternoon with six minutes and 57 seconds to go. A penalty on that try for the extra point was roughing the kicker. And so it goes against Ohio State. And Michigan will mark that ball now at the 45-yard line. And Schlopey will get five yards there to kick this one off. 
So Michigan on top, 24 to 14. Wolverines led at the end of the first quarter by a score of 10 to nothing. Halftime, they led 10 to 7. And then Ohio State went out in front of the third quarter, 14 to 10. Michigan came back early in the fourth quarter to make it 17-14. And now, leading 24-14, thanks to that eight-yard scoring, uh, scoring strike from Smith to Caddis. Kickoff dive. And waiting now is Lindsey and Woolridge. It'll be out of the end zone and marked at the Ohio State 20-yard line. So Slopey has done the job. No return on that kick. And the Wolverines defense all set to face the offense of the Ohio State Buckeyes. And the Wolverine and defense has come up with big, big plays. Steve Smith, eight-yard pass to Caddis as Michigan went 60 yards and 354. But don't forget, they got the ball because of a fumble recovered by Michigan on the, their own 40-yard line when Ohio State had been driving. So Michigan's last two scores resulting on turnovers by Ohio State and intercepted pass. This last one on a fumble. Tom Zach firing in desperation as he had pressure that time, trying to stay away from Mike Hammerstein. Hammerstein busting in there and forcing an early pass. You'll see Mallory, number 42, left side of your screen, come outside and around as Rodney Lyles comes inside. And Hammerstein, from the other side, just beats his man one-on-one. -on -one. But he forces Tom Zach to throw early. While that isn't a sack, it's almost as good because Tom Zach had no way to complete that pass with that kind of pressure from Hammerstein. All right, second down and 10, Ohio State. Still at the Buckeye 20-yard line. Tom Zach trying to get somebody open and fires complete this time to Frank on the far side of the field forced out of bounds just across the 40 yard line. So the big tight end has been very very busy for Ohio State Hassel knocked him out of bounds pass goes out Michigan no blitz this time four man rush and you see Frank is out there Michigan's giving that short pass up at this point Hassel's got him one on one. Hassel let him go then to the deep man lot. They came up, but it's a first down for the Buckeyes. 6.39 left, Ray. This isn't over yet. John Frank has made his sixth reception for a total of 75 yards. First and 10 Buckeyes. A lot of pressure again. Tom Zach firing way over the head of his tight end. Is coming in there and busting in there for Michigan. Rodney Lyles giving chase. Rodney Lyles coming on a blitz. Both inside linebackers also coming. Michigan picked that blitz up, but more than anything, it's almost a situation where when Tom Zach sees those linebackers coming, he gets back there in that pocket and gets worried. So he throws early. It's a state of mind. They're creating a state of mind for Tom Zach by running the blitz on him so often. Michigan fans creating that wave around the stadium right now on the stands. And the wave is in motion. 6.28 to go in this ball game. Second and 10 Ohio State at the Buckeye 42-yard line. Tom Zach again ready to pass. And firing almost a one-handed catch that time by Anderson leaping up. Couldn't hang on to it. He also had his tight end Frank going deep, but he was covered by two men. It looked as though there was some mistake in a pattern because both Frank and Anderson ran through the same area that Tom Zach threw the ball. Normally, your receivers are further away from each other in that instance. That time, Anderson came across the middle. Tom Zach led him a little too much. So the Buckeyes now third and ten. Before we talk about the turnovers in the third and fourth quarter here. Big plays turned in, of course, by Cochran and Carlton Rose. And timeout is called now with 6.24 to go in the ball game. Michigan leading the score. Wolverines 24, Buckeyes 14. <laughs> Time back in, third down and ten. Total yardage by the Buckeyes, offensive-wise, 326. They've gone to 184 in the air, rushing in 34 carries for a total of 142. We'll check out a Michigan in just a moment. Third and 10 for the Buckeyes at the Ohio State 42-yard line. Tom Zach, lucky. Good protection. Flicked away, intercepted Michigan! Fumble! Michigan still has it, however. A scramble down there. Cochran picked it off. And a fellow that flicked it away wound up with it, Mike Mallory. Big play again by Michigan defensively, but that time they smelled it out. Ohio State wanted to go to John Frank, the tight end, coming across the field. He ran right into coverage. Tom Zach tried to force it in. It gets tipped up by Mallory. Cochran reacts to the tip drill. Now he returns it. 
He doesn't put the ball away right there. It gets knocked out, but Mallory was right behind him to pick it up. Once again, Tom Zach tries to force this ball into Frank. He's not open. Tom Zach then takes a blow from both Sensich and Hammerstein and the Michigan defense responds once again. At the Michigan 41, first and 10. Eddie Garrett on the carry, might have got a yard. We talked about Ohio State's total offense. Michigan now 419 yards on 48 carries on the ground for a total of 213 yards. And Smith, 11 of 18 in the air for a total of 206. And the Buckeye is a somber Buckeye right now. Meanwhile, let's just keep possession. I think Bo wants to call for a timeout. Wolverines will take a timeout with five minutes and 44 seconds to go. Michigan, 24. Ohio State, 14. We'll be right back. Total of 17 times. The tailbacks, Rogers 16 times, and Kerry Smith one time for a total 17. So the pullback, Garrett, for the most part, has been busy today. Yes, he has. Michigan has a player injured. It looks like Jerry Diorio down on the other side of the field are looking at a left knee. Milan Vuletic, defensive linebackers coach, along with Gary Moeller, who's the defensive coordinator and assistant head coach, now talking to the defense because the defense has really done the job today, but they're not done yet. There's five minutes and 34 seconds left. Michigan has just run a broken play. It's third down now in about 12, Ray. And one of the things that Michigan could have done had they got a drive after that turnover is they really could have put this thing out of reach. But they're now facing a long third down play. And one of the keys here, not to get involved in a situation where you throw a dangerous pass or something yep. to get that first down. You do not want to give Ohio State a chance to get back in this game. Well, you can afford to be conservative now. Right? Exactly. With a 10-point lead, five and a half minutes left. You can be conservative. If you are going to throw, make sure it's a safe pass. If it's not a safe pass, then either throw it out of bounds or take the sack, and then let your defense get back in play. Jerry DiOrio, the senior from Youngstown, Ohio, at 6'3", 245 pounds, being helped from the field. What a great career he has had for the University of Michigan. Let's keep our fingers crossed. It's nothing serious. However, they were working on that left knee. The situation for the Wolverines now with 534 is at third and 12 at the Wolverine 39-yard line. The Lourdes has checked in on the place of Diorio at that left guard position for Michigan. Armstrong, the fullback, directly behind Steve Smith. And Smith fires to Mark Ray. Incomplete. Dalrola took a real hit from Sean Gale. Gale, by the way, came in this ball game as the hardest hitter of the secondary. And Mark Ray has just found that out. He certainly has. Passes there once again. Smitty right on target. Mark Ray goes up, got his hands on it, and then there comes the hit by Gale. Big, big hit. And almost a deflection over there to Kerry Smith, who was coming over in that area. Mark Ray now getting uh, some attention on the field. He was shaken up on that hit by Gale. But Michigan didn't use much of that clock, did they, no, Ray, after no. that uh, turnover? It did not. Clock at five minutes and 17 seconds. Continuing to work on Mark Ray. He's had a great ball game with a youngster just a few weeks ago, an unknown, and really has felt his presence known here on this Michigan squad. But take a look at the hit once again. Mark Ray up. Does he have possession? Nope. And I'll tell you what, Gale makes sure he doesn't have possession after he was hit. Looks like he's uh, favoring the right leg. And the hit came underneath the arm, it looked like, in the rib area. So the young sophomore from Detroit, of course, looks as if he is through for this afternoon. But he's had a fine game. Fourth down and 12 for the Wolverines back at the 39-yard line. Well, if there was ever a time Don Bracken broke out of his slump, this now, is it. Yeah, absolutely right. Bracken back around his 25-yard line for the punt. Garcia Lane for Ohio State around his 25. And Lane dangerous. Good punt by Bracken. Sends him back inside the 10. The 5. Now trying to find running room. Great coverage by the Wolverines as they down Lane at the 8-yard line of Ohio State. A great punt by Bracken. 
great coverage by the special team. Boy, I tell you, Don Bracken, for being a goat earlier in the game with that 17-yard kick that gave Ohio State the ball at the 26-yard line, sure responded there on that one. And a mistake, I think, by Garcia Lane to go back and actually field the ball inside his five-yard line. He should have let it go, and they get it on the 20. But now they're stuck down inside their 10. Great coverage by Michigan because Ohio State came with the punt rush, didn't have a return on Tom Jack back the pass and has it completed. Cooper riding Frank out of bounds, the tight end at the 15-yard line. Not enough for the first down. Once again, Michigan is willing to give up the short pass, let Ohio State use as much of the clock as they can, and Frank goes out underneath. Cooper's got him, makes the sure tackle. There it is again. Cooper coming up, reacting to the ball. That's an eight-yard gain. Michigan will give those up down the field, but they want to keep them in play if they can. Well, Michigan does that. Ohio State looking for a big play if they can. Going deep, very deep. Anderson overshoots him by about a yard. Cochran on the coverage, but Cedric Anderson was going deep as Ohio State was going for a touchdown strike. A flag back at the 15-yard line at the line of scrimmage. Illegal receiver downfield. That's a loss of down. And a penalty for the Buckeyes. Getting darker here. The skies getting darker. It's uh, been an overcast afternoon, but darker now here at Ann Arbor and getting very dark now for Ohio State and their possibilities of pulling this one out. Four minutes and 25 seconds to go. Mark back at the 10-yard line, illegal receiver. Downfield, turn over the down box and make a third and just about nine nine yards this could be it for Ohio State 425 remaining in the ball game the Wolverines of course in conference play shooting for their eighth win of the year against that one loss against Illinois Ohio State would suffer their third defeat could not stay in bounds, could not make the reception. Again, Cochran covering, intended for Jemison, incomplete. And Ohio State faced now with a fourth and nine, still at the Buckeye 10-yard line. Once again, Ray, the defense does the job. You just can't say enough about how this defense has played under pressure in so many games this season. They came up with a big turnover against Iowa that allowed them to get down and kick the field goal to beat the Hawkeyes. All season long, they have played very well defensively, and here against Ohio State, they have done it again, coming up with three turnovers and really turning this game around. Edwards in there to punt for Ohio State. The Buckeyes looking for a turnover. Cooper waiting for it around the 46-yard line now of Ohio State, straight up the middle, inside the 40, struggles down to the 37-yard line. Evan Cooper bringing it down to the Ohio State 37. So Michigan with four minutes and 12 seconds remaining on the clock, leading in this ball game, 24 to 14. Over 106,000 fans watching this game at Michigan Stadium this afternoon. And Cooper coming in this ball game, the leading punt returner in the Big Ten. A lot have been said, of course, about Garcia Lane of Ohio State, but Cooper in Big Ten play doing a little better than Garcia Lane. First and 10 Wolverines. Garrett and Kerry Smith. Kerry Smith, the tailback, has the ball and brought down just inside the 40-yard line. Just about getting back to the line of scrimmage. Dave Morrill in there to make a good, clean tackle. Actually, a loss for Kerry Smith. Only the second time this year that he has been dropped for a loss. A loss of a yard. Second and 11. And the clock continuing to tick away down to three minutes and 40 seconds. And Michigan staying with a double tight end alignment. Garrett this time straight ahead. Rambling down close to the 35 yard line. Tatum in there along with Thomas Johnson and Casillas for Ohio State on the stop. Michigan taking plenty of time as they go back to the huddle. Now Vince Bean checks in. 
And Caddis comes out. Third and eight. Smith. Bean making a shoestring catch. They rule it incomplete, saying that he trapped it. Incomplete. And so Michigan on a fourth and nine now has a decision to make. I'll tell you, that the, the pass was in there because Ohio State came with a blitz. Kerry Smith is blocking Tatum, who's running through the middle. The pass is just low, but Vincent Bean is open, and sure enough, that one was on the ground. I'll tell you, Vince Bean did a good job of getting down and making it even look close. May have him try on a shortstop next spring here. Absolutely. Look out, Alan Trammell. Bracken back to punt. Lane around his 10-yard line. Aiming for the corner. And goes out of bounds inside the 20, inside the 15, just around the 14-yard line. So Bracken does the job that time and no run back and did not put it back out for a touchback back to the 20-yard line. Two minutes and 42 seconds remaining. Well, we'd like to take this opportunity to thank all of you who have joined us along our telecast this year on the Wolverine Sports Television Network in the various cities around Michigan and out of state. Thank you for your comments. And, of course, thanks to the stations that carried our telecast, all the gentlemen and ladies that made it possible, you the fans, and our sponsors, of course, across the network. Tom Zach, back to pass. Hits Byers. And Byers run out of bounds at the 21-yard line. In there was Hassel to knock him out of bounds. I guess we talked, Jim, of thanking people, and certainly the folks here at the University of Michigan, the athletic department, have made it possible, but they've also been great aides in helping us to make our job easier. All the way down the line, from Don Canham in particular, Head coach Bo Schembechler, Sports Information Director Bruce Motti, and many, many more. Knocked away that time by Mallory. Good defensive play by the Michigan linebacker. I'd like to say hello to Cyrus Varner in the booth with us. This is the second time around this year. A very big M man and M supporter. Take a look at Tom Zach back to throw once again. Michigan taking away the deep middle. They are forcing Ohio State to go outside with short passes. Mike Mallory back there taking that deep drop is able to get into that zone cut off the passing lane for the quarterback Jim Snyder our statistician throughout the season we appreciate Jim's fine work Fred Poisson has been our spotter thank you Freddie for an outstanding job in this ball game again and a pass is complete this time to uh, Jemison and comes up to around the 44 yard line Buckeyes now, besides being down by 10, fighting that clock with 2.25 remaining. Time is called now as they bring up the chains to the 44. You see how deep Michigan's people are. Jemison comes up, he's way underneath, but everybody's running back to take away the big play. It's completed pass at the 45-yard line of Michigan. Frank that time of the receiving end, the tight end. Two minutes and 15 seconds. The story of this ball game and what's remaining. First and ten. Tom Zach. Good catch by Anderson. And Michigan's Cooper and Lott colliding over there, covering on the play. Anderson makes the reception at the 32, but Lott is stunned. Boy, Cooper and Lott really came together over there, covering on that play. Yeah, they ran right into each other. They're both covering, and they're coming and reacting to the ball, reacting to the receiver, and when they saw him going down in the ground, both of them pulled up, and when both pulled up, you'll see they run right into each other, face mask to face mask. Yeah. There it is. That's, that's, that's tough when you get hurt by your own guy. Special thanks this year, too, I think, uh, right, uh, Alex Agassi who was our technical advisors on these broadcasts and did an outstanding job all season long helping us get ready for these telecasts of Michigan football. Certainly has Tom Zach and how Tom Zach now 19 of 35 244 yards in the air for Ohio State met in 58. Popping to Anderson Anderson high in the air did he make the catch touchdown Ohio State. No flags. 
Anderson taking it away from Hewlett and from Cooper, making a marvelous catch of the end zone. Ray, it's not over till it's over. Did Yogi Berra once say that? Yes, he did. This is a Hail Mary pass. Tom Zag goes up. He's got double coverage. Pumps once, but Cooper doesn't take the fake. He stays back. It looks like he's ready to make the interception, and it's bobbled around there and right into Anderson's hands in the end zone. They talked about a big play man for Ohio State besides Byers. It has been Cedric Anderson, the big play man when it comes to pass reception. Cedric Anderson has the touchdown. The extra point is good. And Ohio State back in this ball game with a minute and 52 seconds to go. Michigan 24, Ohio State 21. But it was a circus catch by Cedric Anderson that did, did the trick. Exactly. And when you talk circus catch, you're right. This is one of those things that you see in the pros sometimes. They just throw up a Hail Mary into the end zone, hope to get a deflection. And in this instance, that's exactly what they get. Wasn't anything fancy. Simple out pattern and up. They call it a uh, out, up and go. And he was out there, covered well, but the ball batted around. Anderson came up with it. We got a three-point game. Minute 52 left, Ray. Really have. And Anderson, by the way, his third touchdown reception of the year at Ohio State. And the Buckeyes, after they got the ball, took only 50 seconds to move it down and get in for the score. Minute and 52 seconds. You see it right there. Michigan leading by three that lead cut Ohio State Buckeyes may have something on mind of getting possession in the way of an onside kick they've got to shoot some dice right now that's a very very big possibility and I'm sure that the Michigan Wolverines will come up with their what they call anti kangaroo team they'll have a lot of people up around the 50 yard line make sure when they get that football to lay down on it hold on to it don't allow that ball to get in the hands of Ohio State all right, Rick Spangler, number 10, is a man that has that ball placed up on the tee. He's the fellow that just got the extra point for Ohio State. At the 40-yard line, Michigan looking for that onside kick. Batted around by Ohio State. I believe Cooper fell on it. Contact was made with that ball around the 50-yard line, and Evan Cooper coming up with it. You know? As uh, that ball had not gone 10 yards and was touched by Ohio State. Exactly. The ball had not gone the designated 10 yards when it was touched by Ohio State. Now uh, it comes up into Cooper's hands. Here it is again. You can see it's got to get over two yard lines and it does it right there. It is batted. Now Michigan can accept the ball right there and they do. So Michigan gets the ball on the Ohio State 48 yard line. Ohio State goes 85 yards in just 50 seconds and six plays. The Hail Mary pass, Tom Zach to Cedric Anderson. Now Michigan's got the ball. Minute 51 left. Ohio State with two timeouts, Ray, and I think they'll probably be using them. I thought that was Steve Hill uh, that got that hand up there and touched that ball for Ohio State. Kerry Smith drives to the 45-yard line of Ohio State. Just about uh, three, possibly four yards on the carry. Give him three and uh, make it down second down and seven. Ohio State has not used their timeout right. The clock running a minute and a half to play. Wolverines taking plenty of time. One first down and this game's over with Ray. Nelson checks out. Caddis in there at tight end. Garrett straight ahead. Maybe got a yard on a carry. Well, the gentleman that was racked up and trying to make a reception, Mark Ray, who already had a touchdown earlier in this ball game, leaving early to get some more first aid treatment, and I'm sure examination with that leg. Giovanni Johnson is in there at a wide receiver for Michigan, and we're down to one minute and three seconds left as the Buckeyes had called for a timeout, and so they have one remaining. Strategy time for the Wolverines and Bo Schembechler to have his word. And one thing we should also think about, would Ohio State go for the tie? That's very possible. Their longest kick, if I'm not mistaken, Ray, is one of 43 yards, and that would mean they'd have to get somewhere inside the 25-yard line of Michigan. Paul Allen 
Paul Allen, of course, is the fellow that has that 43-yarder. And, Ray, what happens if it is a tie? Who gets the bull bid and what happens? Do you know? No, I don't, but I'm uh, going to count on uh, Jim Snyder here from the Sports Information Office. Tie means that Michigan uh, has second place, but, of course, uh, we expect that they would also move on into the Sugar Bowl. Minute and three seconds. Third and eight. Smith wanted to go up the middle. Looked as if he was going to try the old quarterback and go up the middle, and he was going to go no place. Leading the way, Thomas Johnson. Again, the young man from Detroit McKenzie leading the way on that defensive stop. Exactly. Ohio State came with a big blitz up the middle. Steve Smith was going with the quarterback draw, and the blitz just, there was no way for a quarterback draw to work when you got people filling the middle like that. 52 seconds left to go. We got fourth down. Bo Schembechler talking to the officials, talking to his troops. Right now, there's a question of who's on the sideline. Who called a timeout? Ohio State, apparently, they did not use a timeout. Okay, the Ohio State did not use their timeout. And they, we already have fans up on, this, on a, the goalpost at the north end of the field. I think that's a little premature at this point. I do, too. They have got to get those people off of that uh, goalpost. And they're having a great difficulty doing it. Now the clock begins to run. Down to 42 seconds. Now, and, now and Ohio down. State calls the timeout. Okay, what? and now that's what Bo Schembechler exactly wanted. Exactly wanted, right. And they had stopped the clock, and he was saying, hey, we didn't call for a timeout. Exactly. Keep it going. Exactly. We didn't call for a timeout. We've got 25 seconds to run. If Ohio State calls a timeout, fine. Now, Earl Bruce is talking to the officials on the far side of the field, wondering what that situation is. But that's what Bo Schembechler was so upset about earlier. He assumed Ohio State would call a timeout. They did not, but the clock did not start. That's right. So when Michigan went out on the field in their huddle, the referee started the clock. Then Ohio State had to use their last timeout, and the clock rolled down to 40 seconds. Now Michigan will come back on the field, give the ball to Ohio State on the punt, and Ohio State will have to negotiate whatever yardage they make, whatever uh, wherever they get the football, in 40 seconds without any timeouts remaining. Bracken once again, pressure situation, standing back at his 35, line of scrimmage to 50. No contact made, Ohio State man back on side. Booms this one, Garcia Lane looks at it, bounces at the two and into the end zone. So touchback, 32 seconds remaining as Bracken hobbles off the field. Ohio State will have the ball at its own 20-yard line, Michigan clinging to a three-point lead, 80 yards to go for the Buckeyes to get something going here. This is a situation again, Ray, we got to talk about this. Ohio State can, inside the 25, get in field goal position. Michigan will be playing deep center field, looking for the long pass down the sidelines. That means that secondary of Michigan got to be really alert. And complete to the tight end, Frank makes the reception at the 38-yard line. Gant in there and Hewlett to make the tackle. First down, Ohio State at the Buckeye 38-yard line. Remember now, Buckeyes have no timeouts, but they stop the clock to get the chain up here. 24 seconds remaining. Tomzak faking to Byers, looking, passing, complete. First down, Michigan fans thought the Ohio State Buckeye receiver had been out of bounds, but Jemison made the completed pass. And they're going to bring it back now saying it was no good. Exactly. The official on the outside, the sideline, the pass was no good. Rose is in single coverage over there in the underneath. Looked good to me unless he was bobbling the ball. And now they're all over that goal post. It's one of the things you just do not like to see, Ray. And I really mean it. I don't 
want to say anything bad about the fans, but the game is not over yet, and those people should not be on the goalpost. It's as simple as that. Take another look at it. Take another a look, look at the uh, catch again or non-catch. Oh, he did Chadwick, bobble it. Yep. He did bobble it, and the referee was right there. Good call. As we could not see it from that other angle, that time you can see he did not have possession. He was still juggling it. Tom Zach, with 15 seconds on the clock, trying to get a pass out. And a desperation going to his tailback, Byers. Around him was Hammerstein, trying to bring him to the turf. Down to 11 seconds on that incomplete pass. The clock is stopped. Michigan hanging on 24 21. The Buckeyes got some distance to go. And Hammerstein had Tom Zag by one leg, and Tom Zag could not plant well enough with Hammerstein hanging on that leg to really get anything on that pass and get it out to Byers. Tom Zag now 21 of 39 for 294 yards. When's the last time you heard of a quarterback from Ohio State with that much yardage to the air? 11 seconds. And, and out of the hands at time of Frank the tight end. Clock stops seven seconds remaining. Boy, you don't see that happen often. John Frank is an outstanding athlete from Ohio State. One of their best tight ends in their history. And uh, he doesn't drop too many. Top of your screen. Time remaining in the ball game. Seven seconds. Fourth and ten for the Buckeyes. Jemison Look at Earl Bruce. About right. It's about right. And here's Tom Zach. He's going to run for the first down, but again, the, the clock runs out. And that's the ball game. Michigan heads for the Sugar Bowl. Virtue of a 24 to 21 victory over Ohio State this afternoon in Ann Arbor. We'll be back with a wrap up after these words. So after a couple of losses to Ohio State, that string comes to an end. Michigan wins it 24 to 21. And in the conference, eight and one second place belonging to Wolverines. Yeah, they really did a good job today. I think more than anything, you got to give this Ohio State victory to the defense. They came up with the big plays. They forced turnovers. Brad Cochran with a couple of interceptions. Fumble recovery by Hammerstein. Really got Michigan back in the game. Gave them the lead in the fourth quarter after Ohio State had taken the lead 14-10. I think it was a... Outstanding job by the defense, as it has been all season, really. Somebody says lucky and good, and when you are lucky to get those turnovers, you got to be good to do something with them. Exactly, but you got to make your own luck, too, and that's what the Michigan defense did all season. I can remember back to the Iowa game. They forced the turnover, got them the position to get the ball to kick the field goal to beat Iowa. So the defense all season has done it, and it's been a great year. Uh, I'm going to be looking forward to seeing that Sugar Bowl. Let's talk about Michigan replay. You got a date with Bo Schembechler. You got a date with Bo Schembechler. For all of those people along the Michigan or Wolverine Sports Television Network, we've got two shows left. The season finale, of course, when we discuss the Ohio State game, and I'm sure that he'll be in a good mood, probably smoking a $2 cigar. <laughs> and and uh, then we've got one show following that, the season wrap-up show, and we will have a special, of course, before the bowl game down at uh, New Orleans in the Sugar Bowl. It's been a lot of fun, this 1983 Big Ten season. Been fun working with you, Jim. Been great working with you. You've been the best of all time. So we'll take a time out now, pack our bags, get all ready for the Sugar Bowl, and we hope to see all of you very soon. Until then, so long, everybody.